What is up, everybody? Hello, hello, hello. If you do not know who I am, my name is Naja, aka The Voodoo Child. And this is the Tribe T segment. And that is basically where you guys send in your stories, um, your experiences, if you need advice, anything like that. And we all give you advice. I give you advice from the best of my ability. And the Tribe gives you advice because I have not gone through every single experience on the planet, okay? So we have um, our live stream chat in the Twitch. Again, if you guys would like to be in the live chat while I'm actually doing these lives, please go ahead and head on over to Twitch. We go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 11 a.m. And we shoot the shit. We shoot the shit. Um, Today's stream, if you are watching this on YouTube, shout out to the YouTube tribe. Um, Today's stream is going to be another extra long stream if you're watching on YouTube. But I understand some of you guys get very, very weirded out by the creepy stories. So I like to put them towards the end. So don't worry. I'm going to put a timestamp over here. Um, hopefully my live won't hiccup again like it did last week and it'll be a smooth transition. Um, but yeah, don't worry. All the scary stuff will be towards the end. Okay. Um, today we have four stories on the non spooky portion of things. And one of them does have receipts. So I'm really excited to get into the receipts. Um, and they are actually a moderator. Like I'm not going to spill their tea. But they're one of my mods. I like really, really like them. They're one of my fave mods. Not that I have a fave. I said they're one of my faves, okay? Um, super cool. Has been riding with me for years. Like, and it's, I, they sent in something. So I'm really excited. And, oh, and I forgot to tell you guys. This, the basis of this stream is, am I the a-hole, okay? Um, I tried to set up a little poll on the uh, chat just so we can, you know, play around with that. So I'm going to try something a little later once the story is up. Uh, and I'm going to ask you guys, at the end of each story, is the person writing in actually the a-hole? My rule of thumb usually is if you're writing in and you're asking, am I the a-hole? I usually just automatically go for no. I'm not going to lie. Only because people just guilt trip you so much in life. Everybody is so them oriented where it's like, mm, I don't know. So the first story by the OG tribe mod is just called Am I the Crazy One? And they have hella receipts, and we're going to be putting it on the screen. So this is a really good stream to watch if you've never seen me before, so you get how we get down. Um, This second one is called Smoke Sesh Gone Wrong. Was I being the a-hole or was I being set up? Set up at the smoke sesh sounds diabolical. Um, <laughs> the third one is sounds a little sad, bruh. And off rip again. I I don't think you're the a hole. They said my dad is an alky, and I'm tired. Am I the a? No. Story finished. What do you mean your dad an alky? That sounds like he is the a hole. He living in his a holeness. And then the last one is long.com. Super long. But you know what? They waited a minute for me to read it, so I'm going to read it. My friend has sent me a four-page Google document. I'm not even being dramatic. Can I turn? Okay. Friends. Look here. And this one is titled, Was I in the Wrong? Am I the Asshole? Right. Right. That, yeah, y'all might as well get cozy. Get your, get your uh, hot chocolate. Get your hottie toddies. Get a nice fall beverage. You got the Ice Spice Munchkin drink. Get you some of that. No promo. Um, and we're going to get into this craziness let me get my water the 
the first one. Am I the crazy one? Am I the a-hole? Am I the crazy one? Hey, Nadja. I hit you up recently, but I really need someone to look at this and tell me that I'm not the asshole. Pictures are attached, but let me give some context first, okay? Before I say anything, I always hear people saying their zodiacs, and I want to say mine too. I am a Taurus sun and a Taurus moon. Shout out to all my Taurus in the chat. I don't know what that means, though. <laughs> but I think I'm missing the rising part, but I don't know what that is either. You just got to get your birth time. A lot of, You got to ask your parents because a lot of us, we're not going to know. You know, it is what it is. So my life is kind of all over the place. And in the last seven years, I've noticed I, in the last seven years, I have moved four times and I'm already looking for another place to stay. Damn. Most recently, I moved in with my aunt and uncle because in 2022, my old housemates weren't taking COVID restrictions seriously and flew somebody in from China to stay at our house. She would have had to get her ass whooped. I'm over here thinking you're about to say she done flew in somebody from out of town. She done flew in grandma. You flew in somebody from ground zero in 2020? Friend, off rip, you're already not the asshole. You're already not the asshole. Because what the hell? <sighs> this person stayed at our house straight off the plane, no quarantine. My housemates had a baby. My housemates have a baby and weren't taking C-19 restrictions seriously. Oh, wow. That poor baby. And the girl was all up in the baby's face only a one day of being in the country. I was so pissed about the situation. So I stayed in my room. And I only came out when I knew that those people were upstairs or that person was upstairs. I packed up and I got out two days after the person showed up. My uncle is always there when I need him. So the minute I told him what was going on at the house, he had a rental van in the driveway waiting for me. I know that's right. Wow. I'll start off by saying I am forever grateful for everything my aunt and uncle have done for me. Things have been constantly shitty for me. And there isn't a single soul in this country I can trust to have my back when I need it besides them. Well, that's dope that you have somebody because I would be so pissed if I had like round one COVID. You know, when you shoot, you shoot in poo poo out your out your butt and you out your mouth and out your pores. The nasty kind. Yeah. We're good. We're good. He's talking about they ain't right. They really ain't. So with that being said, my aunt is getting on my last freaking nerve to the point where I'm swearing at her in my head. I thought they were the homies. She's the type of person you can never please. Everyone needs to be perfect. Everyone needs it to be perfectly her way. Zero room for error. I brought up how uptight she is about everything to my cousin and was basically told, this is why I don't live with her no more. <laughs> she said, girl, we love you, but we do not like how you live in our house. That's crazy. So here's some examples. She brought a fridge with no handles. And then got mad because there was fingerprints on the door. Well, how is she supposed to open it? So now we have to have a washcloth on hand each time we open the door to wipe the prints. Girl, are you good? Like, my 
mommy dearest auntie dearest so she has the one where you got to grip it and open it right um that's inevitably you're gonna have prince i'm renting their basement so that whole space is mine on several occasions i've come from work and found my things from the basement in the living room move to a corner near my bedroom door or she'll just say keep your things in your room I don't like to see things out and about first of all why the fuck is you in my space when I'm paying to live down here and you touching my things that's all I want to know I'm I'm telling you you ain't the a-hole I'm telling you right now I, I could just tell right now something ain't right I get it. And, and and then look, if I get like you really fuck with these people. So don't think I would tell you to do this. But if anyone else is in this position, bro, oh, you got you could sue somebody for this. Your landlord is not allowed to be in your space, touching your things. No. That's that's not it. So I get it. It's your roof. So I'll just keep all my things in my room, I guess. Nadja, I go out of my way to make sure I put everything back the way I found it before I leave the kitchen. I have anxiety every time I go into the common areas to the point where sometimes I'll go a whole day without eating. Damn, because I know I have to walk past her and use her stuff in the kitchen and she'll have something to say. And when she doesn't say something, she's always just watching me. I should mention that she doesn't have a job. So she's always home 25-8. Hmm, this sounds familiar. Y'all remember yesterday? This sounds familiar. She trying to get you out the house. To express how bad it gets, I like sitting with my legs folded under me. It's been a bad, it's been a habit ever since I was a kid. And a few days after I moved in, she asked me to stop putting my feet up like that when I sit on the chair. I've made a conscious effort to stop, but now I'm stressed every time I eat. I can't remember the last time I sat in the common area and positioned my feet, and the position of my feet was not on my mind. Yeah, she's doing too much. There is no room for human error or forgiveness. That's the part that frustrates me the most. Never once does she think, oh, my niece must have just forgotten. It's always, you're too big for me to have to tell you this. Look. I would have been like, ma'am, missus, right, you're being bitter and mean for what? Not y'all said you're going to have to recreate the wire hanger scene. Look. All I know is this. I would have had to, look, I would have just turned the whole basement into the apartment and then I would have bought a pots pans put my name on it and then it's like don't touch my shit I'm gonna wash my one pot I'm gonna wash my one cup and it sucks because I learned how to do that by living with like on some college shit you know you shouldn't have to do that with your family that's so toxic that they do that they're doing you like this like it it is someone in the chat said it's giving severe OCD it really is and OCD is genetic, it's hereditary. So if you're imposing your routines on somebody else and they already have an anxious personality, what do you think is going to happen? Now she you got she has your routines in her head like it's too much. This lady is the a-hole. Mm. The house will be clean, spotless, and she will complain about how messy it is. There was a day when my cousin and I were both there and she was complaining about how the floors were dirty and they needed to be mopped. They were clean to me because I mopped it the day before and my cousin literally told her the floor is clean and she's going to respond, I know my floors. Well, then why don't you get on the floor, mommy dearest, and clean your fucking floors yourself? You can't talk to her about anything because she's always right, apparently. Whenever she brings things up, I resorted to just saying okay and moving accordingly. Look. Anyway, on to the pictures. Yes, I do have some receipts over here that we could watch. 
Oh my God, it's about to get a little, uh, a little, a little cray cray. I bought some Resolve to clean a stain. I noticed on the couch in the basement living room yesterday slash Monday. I have a terrible memory and I'm constantly busy with my new job. So I put it on the couch next to the stain so that I'll remember to clean it when I get back from work and have the time. See, how I was raised was when you see something, do something. I wouldn't even have set up none of the shit. Cause I, I, I like my anxious ass. I wouldn't even want to. I would have just played it off like I never seen the shit. I ain't even gonna lie to you. If that lady, like I was in a rush to go to work, I wouldn't even have done it. Cause my people used to get on me about, or not just me, but my siblings too. Like if they saw you getting ready to do something and you didn't just do it, bruh, we used to get ate the fuck up. I already know what this crazy ass bitch is gonna say. She's gonna be like, so you brought out all the cleaner. And you didn't clean it up? Like, I already know what she about to say to you. So, as I left, the only other things that were in the room was a small side bag that I switched when I was leaving for work, my to-go cup, nail clippers, and my boots by the door. So, she has before pictures of what the place looked like before she went to work. Okay. Okay. So for one, girl, this is nice. This the basement? This is nice. What y'all doing here? No, for real, where is the husband though? Non-existent, I'm guessing. Here, let me show y'all the other. This is, so these are her little boots she was talking about. Here's her little cup. This is her little bookshelf. You know, chilling. Got her little manga and everything. Chilling. Got, I see you. Got your little one piece. Got your Harry Potter. I see you. Okay. So that was how it looked before she went to work, right? That was how it looked before she went to work. Was that messy? Was that messy, y'all? Because to me, that wasn't messy. That shit looked like you're about to do a walkthrough of the basement. Like, let's keep it a buck. So I come home the next day. And all my things are packed on the bookshelf near my bedroom door. She hasn't said anything, but she's been aggravated all evening. I can't tell if it's because of me or not anymore, because that's just her constant state. Right, everybody's like, bro, that shit clean as fuck. Like, what? My uncle hasn't said anything. Yeah, it's giving enabler. It's giving silent enabler. Here, I'm going to show you what she did. And I really do think that your aunt might have some type of um, anxiety disorder or something. I'm not no doctor. I'm just saying it don't make no sense. So show you the before and after. So y'all see, this is what it looked like before. This is like her little boots by the door and the little cup, right? Such a mess. So just because you took the boots and the cup, right? And then threw them in the corner. Right? Right, imagine having to take pictures every time you leave the house. That's crazy, right? This is the bookshelf. That's how the bookshelf used to look. Where's the other one? And, that, and then she just like threw all of this stuff, the cup and everything. It's like she's making a little pile I have a homegirl with um, ADHD. They be doing this. They make like little, when they clean, they make like little piles. The pile makes sense to them. I mean, it is what it is. I've seen actual dirty ass rooms and stuff before. I'm a girl. But yeah, my ADHD homegirl, that's what she do. When she cleans, she not saying my friend dirty, don't do me. Um, She'll make little groups. Like she'll literally have a purse full of purses in a pile with other purses, like, I don't know, man. 
I don't know. That's it's given you're not cleaning the way I want you to clean because I don't know about y'all. That looks um that looked pretty clean to me. Like this is what it looked like before she left. And this is what it looked like when she came back. Like it looks exactly like this lady is off, bro. Right, and then you made the bookshelf dirty. Like, damn. And if somebody in chat was like, that's what ADHD is. No, man, look, a doctor diagnosed my friend. I did it. From what they told me is, is that is their, when they, they start cleaning something and then they go and do something else. And in their brain, that's their way of like knowing. I don't know, bro. I don't judge people, bro. Damn. Damn, y'all. Damn. <laughs> damn, man. Look. But yeah. That her shit was not dirty to me, bro. It was not dirty to me. So my uncle don't say nothing. She's constantly on his ass about messes too when the things that he complains about is just simple human error. One frustrating thing is when I cook, I clean as I go. And sometimes I'll have one pot left or one cutting board, but I'll also sit but I'll sit to eat before finishing the dishes. While I'm eating, she will go in the kitchen and complain that I didn't finish cleaning. I'm still here. I know. Damn, can I just eat? Girl, man, this lady is like walking on eggshells. Wow. Man, after looking at the before and after pics, can you tell me, am I messy or is she just being extra AF by coming into my space and doing this? I put all the stuff from my bookshelf back to where I had them before I left. This is crazy. Um, I'm not going to act stupid and say the stuff didn't all have a home to go to. I should have kept them in my. Oh, so basically she's saying if she understands that all of the stuff that um, was scattered, like the boots and the cup did have a proper place. Like she could have put the cup in the dishwasher. She could have put her boots by the actual front door. But I are I disagree. I feel like this is above and beyond over the top because at the end of the day, if you're paying rent for the space, that front door is technically your front door. You should not be inside of that basement, Miss Mamas. Like, why are you in there? If anything, that should be the one room in the house that you can do whatever you want. I would buy a mini fridge. I would buy a, 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 a hot burner so I could cook in there. Like, because what the hell? And then it didn't even look, quote unquote, lived in until auntie came in there. Like, in my opinion, that shit looked like an Airbnb. And then auntie came in there and just started piling shit. Like, why are you putting shit in piles? Um, They said, I am not a dirty person, as you can see from the pictures. My room is clean. But if a human being is living somewhere, then obviously there will be signs of life. No, for real. I guess that's just too much for her to handle. I want to hear you and the tribe's opinion on this. And on the pictures, I know it's small, but I had the worst day at work, and this just sent me over the edge. I also called my mom and ranted for an hour. Yeah, what's up with your parents? Like, mama can't come and, and let you live with them? And then this is this your mom's sister or your mom's brother? Like, who is this? You know? Thank you for reading my story. I hope everyone has an amazing day, and I'll most likely be in the chat on Wednesday because it's my favorite time of the week. Well, shout out to you. I hope you're there tomorrow or if you're watching it in future tense today. Um, but yeah, man, look, I think that they the asshole, bro. I really do. Here, one second. I want to see. I'm going to look up how to put the poll in the chat because I don't like how our chat isn't working and we need something. Well, it's working. It's just not on the screen. I'm being, I'm being a baby. But I want to see how to do the poll. Twitch chat poll. How to use polls. Oh, it says the mods can make polls too. Did y'all know y'all could do that? Voting in polls. So when a poll's created... Oh, you got to, like, make it. So at the top of the chat, you can expand the poll to see. So is it a module? So 
So I got to go on my dashboard, create. See, I'll be doing too damn much. Okay, I'll do it though. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll play. Okay, so I got to go to the dashboard, create a new poll. Dashboard. Yeah, I know I'm live, mate. On your dashboard, you go to manage your poll. Manage. Let me stop. Y'all keep using this corn emoji, eh? I added some new emotes if y'all didn't know. Love to see it. Um, manage. Oh, okay. Now I'm seeing all the stuff. Remind me later. Click actions, right? Manage goals, stream together channel click that manage poll there it is create a new poll hey All right, y'all. Hey, shout out to the first time chatter. Um, we're streaming. My goal is to stream until around like one o'clock because we still have some more stories we need to get to. And I've had a few um tech difficulties today. But all right. I'm gonna go back over here. So now let's see. Are they the a-hole? I'm going to put a poll in the chat. Are they the a-hole? Let me know, y'all. Me personally. But yeah, I'm not going I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to jump ahead. I want y'all to let me know in the chat right now. Who do you think the a-hole is? Do you think the a-hole is the person who sent in the story? who is living with the lady or do you think that uh is she the a-hole because at the end of the day the lady is like giving her some place to stay and you know all that stuff or is the auntie the a-hole for just being a little bit too overbearing all right let me know y'all vote vote in the chat is the auntie the a-hole or is the op the a-hole, and then I'm going to let you know what I think because I don't want to influence y'all vote, okay? Let's see. Yo, we got no. Everybody's saying no. They're not the a-hole. So I agree. I don't think they're the a-hole either to keep it a buck because at the end of the day, they're paying rent. You're paying rent. And rent includes um, housing, the kitchen, the bathroom, doing the dishes. So, yeah, no, I don't think that you're the a-hole. If anything, your auntie is doing too much. Your uncle is a freaking enabler. And he ought to be ashamed of himself. Um, it, I feel like it's pretty freaking cut and dry. Uh, let me see. What are you guys saying in the chat? Uh, one of you guys is saying the auntie is whack. I agree. Somebody else is saying the writer is not the asshole. The auntie is the asshole. And the uncle is an asshole by association. I also agree with that. Um, uh, somebody else said it's giving true definition of OCD and narcissistic and lip closed enablers. Oh, wow. That was heavy. They said, because how is your uncle 
going to come pick you up and then not stand up for you. No, seriously. And then like the cousin also, I was also thinking like the cousin is probably like, yeah, you thought auntie, your uncle and auntie were oh so great. These are my parents. My mom is batshit crazy. Like that's why he, when in the beginning, when the cousin was like, yeah, you don't live here. And that's why wild, wild, wild. That's hell. So I'm going to move on to the next story. Let me know what you guys think about that. But, I mean, the tribe has spoken. You have been voted, not the a-hole. <laughs> All right, let's get to this next one. I'm really hoping that this isn't a repeat story because y'all always be sending me stories about going to these damn smoke sessions and something happened. So I'm just really hoping that I have not read this already. But if I have. I got some more for y'all. Don't worry. All right. So this next one is just called smoke sesh gone wrong. Was I being set up or am I the a-hole? Okay. Hey, Nadja. I love your videos, especially the tribe tea. Shout out to the tribe. Oh my God. Let me get some water. Shout out to the tribe. Shout out to the tribe. Um, I myself have not written in a tribe tea for two years. Damn. Mm-mm. Well, thank you for kicking it with me for that long, nonetheless. I was having a conversation with my friend about this story, and I thought it would be an interesting read, at least I hope. It's kind of long, but I hope it's worth it. I'm going to get straight to the point as possible. Um, also, you could just, nah, girl, we don't need to give you no name. It's all good. It's all good. Because y'all don't talk in third person. There's no point. So, this story happened when I was 21 years old. It was March, the very beginning of quarantine, and my friend, let's call her Kay, had called asking if I wanted to come over and chill. And they wanted me to let you guys know that, yes, this was in March, but it was kind of before quarantine was mandated. So this is when everyone just started getting laid off and no one knew what was going to happen or what was really going on. I wasn't actually out in these streets hanging out with a bunch of people during quarantine. I just wanted to clear that up. Well, thank you for clearing that up, friend. Because uh, when you read the beginning of quarantine, it's like, damn, so you was one of them, huh? You was one of them that just, like, did not care and was running the streets, spreading your ick. But anyway, my friend, let's call her Kay, had been asking if I wanted to come over and chill. When I got there, Kay had another friend there. So, and his name was Jalen. So it was me, Jalen, and Kay. Now, Kay was acting a bit off. Her eye makeup was runny, and it seemed she'd been crying. Oh, turns out Kay and her girlfriend had broken up sometime that week, and she was still getting over the breakup. But Kay was still acting a bit unusual. Now, it's important to know that Kay is an interesting character, but I did not know how interesting until this night. Hmm. So are you trying to insinuate that she might be on something? Like, uh, let me stop. So Jalen, Kay, and I are just chilling, listening to music, drinking and all that jazz. Now, I don't remember exactly what triggered it, but Kay starts talking oddly and goes on a whole tangent about having past lives and how time isn't linear and whatnot. And I'm confused, but I just keep going along with it. And Jalen just is kind of ignoring the both of us watching music videos. And in case you're wondering, Kay definitely was not drunk. We were only drinking on high on hard cider. Yeah, it don't matter. Look, if there's alcohol involved, there is a risk of somebody getting lit, okay? It just is what it is. I don't know what to tell you. Um, maybe she couldn't hang. <laughs> like, it is what it is, bro. Y'all just turned 21. I used to drink hard cider back in the day, and it used to get me throwed. Like, so I don't know, but not throwed enough to start talking about interdimensions and uh, time loops and stuff like that, though. But hey, so we were drinking hard cider. Don't remember the brand, but it didn't have a high alcohol percentage. And Kay's tolerance is way higher than mine. 
I'm a super lightweight to just about anything. So if I wasn't drunk, she definitely wasn't drunk. Well, maybe she pre-gamed or something, but she's on something. Jalen ends up leaving, and now it's just me and Kay. Is Jay, is Jalen drinking too? And that's true. Some of the chat said, if you don't eat beforehand, even if you drink a glass of wine, you're going to be messed up. Like, no. Um, Shout out to um, Archangel for the follow. Thank you so much for the follow. I don't know why my little mods ain't working. I mean, my little pop-up modules ain't working today, but they should be working next stream. And thank you so much for the subscription. I really, really really appreciate you subscribing uh, remember guys you can subscribe for free to twitch with an amazon prime membership so thank you so much thank you so much but um yeah my question is was Jalen drinking because it seems to me like Jalen is just there girl like what's going on i don't know so Jalen ends up leaving and now it's just me and Kay. Kay goes on and says how there were some things that she spoke about that she shouldn't have said around Jalen and how Jalen wasn't to be trusted, basically, and just isn't ready to hear some of the stuff that I got to say. Oh, your girl tweaking. In my head, I'm like, okay. So we went in to head into her room and she asked if I want to smoke with her. I said yes, knowing I was about to be high. So I was like, fuck it. Um, because I have a very low tolerance. So we're smoking and whatnot. And she has her bedroom door closed and her lights are off with the exception of her little decoration lights, like the little uh, fairy lights. She said, I don't know what they're called. They're called fairy lights. OK, anyway, I immediately start feeling uncomfortable. I'm aware you could feel paranoid from Mary Jane, but this wasn't that. Something in the room felt off. Okay, life tip for anybody out there watching in the ether. If you are partying with somebody and they are acting um, erratic or just off and you could tell like, ooh, you don't act like this when you're drunk. You don't act like that, like you're, you're on one. Or even if you don't know their usual state and you could just visibly see they're on one, I do not suggest consuming any of the same substances that they have. I would not drink out of their cup. I would not smoke out of their J. Like, if they tweaking in your eyes, don't consume what they're consuming. Because that J probably ain't a J, and that cup probably is, you know. Yeah, the, the chat is saying they wonder if the girl has something laced. That's what I'm saying. Or maybe she laced herself purposely. You never know. Especially when you're in that age. Like, people gain new habits and shit. You don't know. Last week, she may have just been smoking tree. Now she over here smoking uh, Delta 8 and K2 or some shit. You know, like, you never know. So I start to freak out because the mirrors are looking weird. The room feels weird. I tell her that I'm uncomfortable and she's trying to calm me down. Lights and incense covers the mirrors and then just changes the subject. Bruh, so she's talking about past lives again. Yeah, this girl might be on something, man. She begins asking me, why are we friends? What drew me to her? And ask if maybe we knew each other in a past life. At this point, and y'all know, y'all know me. I believe in past lives. I've done past life regression therapy before. Past life regression meditation. Um, I like looking into my subconscious and stuff like that and, and doing self-help and doing all that. Right. So don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say she got any hoopla. It's just remember how I told y'all before that certain people when it comes to like because this sounds like psychedelics to me. I'm not going to lie. When it comes to people that do certain psychedelics, especially in this new social media age where it's like an aesthetic to be spiritual, boho, earthy, badu bullshit. Right. Um people love don't realize that these psychedelics are tools and you you're just being a tool collector at this point you're not building bridges you're not building legacy you're not building well you're not doing shit 
but collecting tools, right? I even gave the example of like when a dog, a, a wild dog goes out into a field of mushrooms and they, they do, you get what I'm saying? Like it's, you're not really doing nothing, bro. Um, and shout out to uh the other follow. Shout out to Triple. Thank you so, 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 so much. I'll be uh verbally shouting all of y'all out since y'all not on the screen because I do appreciate y'all. Um, But yeah, this is usually what happens when somebody wants to be spiritual, woke, go on a journey, whatever. And it's too soon. You see how she was saying, oh, I, I, what I'm talking about is too soon for Jalen. It's like, no, girl, you're about to fry your fucking shit. Like, you're about to fry your brain. You're 21. You have more years on this earth as a child. Like, you're frying your shit, dude. You do not need to be doing whatever you're doing. No. Bro, y'all so crazy. You talking about, I saw my past life um, lifted off 300 milligrams. <laughs> I didn't need nothing. I was sober as a gopher. I literally just laid down and I did a meditation. You can look it up on YouTube. They have tons of past life regression meditations. Like, again, tool collector. When you actually use the shit, you realize that you don't really need substances. If anything, the substance helps you to, it's it's kind of hard to deny. Once you do the substance, it's hard to deny that there's more shit going on, right? But you shouldn't be using the substance to see the shit. Does that make sense? The stuff's already always here. I always made I made the example when we talked about this before of like if you have ever done stuff like that before and you notice cats, cats be acting like you're not even supposed to be. They like whenever I done that shit and I look at cats, they always look at me like, bitch, you are not supposed to be on this plane. What are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Because it's always there. You know, look. Look, they talking about, I do not recommend the 300 milligram. No, I know that's right. I wouldn't either. But yeah, y'all are very young and I don't know what you, what she smoked, what she drank or what. And now you over here freaking out. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. I don't even know if, if this was a setup or not for real. I don't, I don't know. Not to judge too soon, but I don't, I don't think anyone's the asshole here. It just seems like we got some young and dumb stuff. Like. So now she asking me, why are we friends and shit? Oh, my God. I'm getting a little weirded out, especially considering the uncomfortable environment. I answer her saying, I'm not really sure. So she pulls out some tarot cards. Here we go. Some more tools. Let's see. Let's pull out some more tools. And pulls a card with three people on it. I'm not well versed in tarot, so I don't know what the card is called. When she pulls the card, she goes, look, that's me, you, and Sarah, a mutual we have. We definitely know each other and we're meant to be together in this life. It's giving spiritual psychosis. She might not even be on nothing for real. She might have something already going on and then this exemplified it. Mm. Shout out to Indica for the follow. Thank you so, 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 so much for the follow on Twitch. Gonna be giving verbal shout outs since my little pop-up not working. So thank you so much. But yeah, it's giving spiritual psychosis. Baby just pulled out a random card out the deck and said, this is me. Like, what is going on? Then she says she wants to try something. And I said, okay. Girl, what? I said, okay, but I'm actually a bit concerned. She then proceeds to say she wants to channel her past life persona, who she calls Marcus, into herself. She also tells me she wants me to channel whoever the hell I was in a past life to figure out who I am. All right, now what are you going to do? Right, they definitely needed an adult. What are you going to do when... You go and do your past life regression because this has happened. They got videos on YouTube of people doing the meditation publicly and all that. What are you going to do when in your past life or in hers, you end up being the person that like murders her or some shit? I've seen that happen so many times on YouTube. They will be like, oh, I got murdered. I got stabbed in the chest. They'll be like, does the person look familiar? 
Like, yes, it's my mother-in-law. She stabbed me in the chest. And and now how are you supposed to go back to your day-to-day life knowing that your mother-in-law stabbed you in the fucking chest back in um, ancient Greece? Like, what? What? And then I got, you know, I got my witchy babes in the chat. They're like, bro, as someone who has been a part of this community, can you please stop? No, for real, like all these little baby witches, you over here pulling out tarot decks and talking about past lives and and smoking Delta, like cut it the fuck out. What? And and thank you. Someone in the chat said, should you even be doing that type of stuff under the influence? I personally don't think you should. I feel like you should be sober and do it in a meditative state. I don't think you should be. I don't even think you should be smoking a little grass because you're going to get emotional. You're going to get very emotional. I don't know. I don't know, man. So now she's a man named Marcus on the inside, I guess. She wanted me to channel whoever I was. And before she does, Kay warns me not to tell Sarah. She says she did the same thing with Sarah. And Sarah was doing it back and they were interacting with each other as past lives selves. But apparently it really freaked Sarah out. So she didn't want me to mention it to her. Now, I thought that was suspicious, but I brushed it off because honestly, I was waiting for my ass to sober up so I could go home because what? I thought I was being pranked or something. No, see, I don't know. I'm getting a, I don't know, bruh. This could be a setup because hello, hello, uh, Swifty ass just got out of a relationship. She's probably on on some other type of time. Talking about you did something with Sarah, too. Okay. Y'all said, I want to do past life regressions, but I'm kind of intimidated. Can someone explain what it's like? Yeah, it's it's very, um, you have to have a good uh, therapist or guide to do it. Like, what she's trying to do, somebody actually went to school for, actually did trial and error, actually does it in a safe environment, not their fucking bedroom, like, or they tell you to do it in your bedroom. I listened to an audio book and that's how I did it for the first time. And I think I still have the video up. I'm not sure. I did post it on YouTube, but I think I was like in my early twenties and I did it. And I just remember being so overwhelmed and being nervous because what it is, is it's your subconscious, right? So these are things that I am struggling with in my life. But my theory is I feel like your brain, it's just easier for it to be like, oh, this is a character going through something. Because at that point in my life, I was self-isolating and stuff. I still had PTSD from like a really bad friend fallout. I had really bad abandonment and trust issues. And I was ignoring it. I did that past life regression I was literally like a um, businessman with a zoot suit in like Chicago, bustling steel industry. I was rich. I even like did like a um, a press conference for like uh, local politicians. Like I just remember being very, very successful, but very, very lonely. And my guy, the, the dude that I dreamt up, he ended up dying alone in a log cabin. And it was beautiful, beautiful property, but by himself, bro. And that shit fucked me up because I'm, you know me, strong, independent black woman. Man, man, man. Like, I'm like, oh, man, this is like, I'm, I'm, man, I can't go out like this. And it really just made me reevaluate my stuff. And then we talk about astrology and tarot with my chart. I think it's my seventh house. What is that? That's the one that has to do with like marriage and um, relationships and shit like that. Said I had the same problem. I love people. But I can't really, you know, because of the trust issues and shit, because I just know people ain't shit. And it, my chart even tells me, like, girl, you got to let shit go. You got to give people a chance, you know. So there is truth and confirmation, but it's literally like, you know, when you have a dream about going to school with no pants on. It just means, like, you're stressed in real life of being exposed. It's like that type of shit, Right. Oh, hell nah. Someone said they shit, they was, they was in a mob. Oh my God. I can't even say what you really said. Damn. Oh, nah. See, I wouldn't go to sleep. Right. I wouldn't even go to sleep. I'll be scared. But yeah, 
if you do have trauma and stuff, because I got some trauma too, I'm not going to lie. I'm not even going to say the first half because they do make you go back and they make you get vulnerable. Your happy place, like, ugh, it's a lot. So you will get emotional. You will cry. I cry. Um, Shout out to Autumn Lake. Thank you so much for the follow on Twitch. I really, really appreciate it. Giving audio shout outs all stream because my mods don't want to work. Uh, my modules, excuse me, not my moderators. Y'all eat. But yeah, long story short, this is a very vulnerable thing to do to somebody. This is very vulnerable. People go to school for this. This is like on the level of um, hypnotherapy almost. Like you don't do this to people. So she's channeling Marcus. That's crazy. My man didn't even have a name. I just knew he was a man. Like he was a man. He was popping. He could have even been Italian. I remember he had like big hairy hands. It's a really intense lead meditation, but she channels Marcus. And when I tell you I laughed out loud, but was also scared at the same time when this girl started talking because she forced her voice to go deep and was like, so, uh, yeah, hey, I'm Marcus. <laughs> and then asked me why I was laughing when I laughed. So me and Marcus are now talking and he tries to get me to figure out how we met in a past life. Man, look. I would have been like, Marcus, I thought that was your job. I thought that was your job, Marcus. Like, oh, my God. At this point, I'm like, fine, let me entertain this girl because she clearly wants me to. So I just start making shit up, saying my name's Cassandra. I got red hair. We met at a party. But this is when it gets weird. Kay, or I guess Marcus, starts asking me how I feel about Sarah. I'm like, huh, Sarah, what do you mean? This took a turn. So I answer saying Sarah's my friend, but I kept getting pressured. Are you sure you don't like Sarah? You don't feel attracted to Sarah? I'm very strong in my stance and say no. At this point, I'm starting to actually get irritated, but I'm keeping my cool. Then Kay starts asking about another friend whom I've never even introduced her to. Well, how do you feel about Tasha? I say the same thing. Tasha is my friend. And it's like Kay was not satisfied with my answers. See, for a lot of all this past life talk, you're talking about a lot of people in this current life, Kay. Or should I say Marcus? Like, girl, she is literally having a spiritual psychosis moment. Um, excuse me. Um, are you sure you don't have any feelings toward Tasha? Again, No. Me and Tasha have been friends since we were 12. They are like a sibling to me. Kay keeps asking me questions after question after question to the point where I get upset and just stop answering her. I felt like I was getting set up or something. So I start ignoring her and I look up at the ceiling, like straight like that. Her voice is background music at this point. Mind you, I'm still a little tipsy, a little buzz. So I eventually end up zoning her out. Then all of a sudden, I hear a big clap noise because Kay is snap clapping in my face, screaming, snap out of it, snap out of it. What type of psycho shit is going on? I have never heard of nothing like this in my life. I'm over here confused, like, what is going on? Why is this girl clapping in my face? Mind you, at this point, her Marcus voice is gone. So I'm looking at her like, what the hell? Kay goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't think this was going to happen to you. This happens when I smoke, too. 
that was the dark Lord entering your. Let me drink some water. I'm not about to play with her. It's time to clock out for real. So I internally start freaking out like, nah, what is this girl really trying to do to me? So I calm myself down and I accidentally zone out again. And here she go clapping in my face again. She then pulls out some sage. So she just got sage, tarot and all this shit on deck. Again, we just got all these tools. I don't know what she was saying. Is she even Native American? But after that happened, I was not okay. My body was slightly shaking. I kept saying random shit. I don't know what she was doing or what happened, but man, I try to calm myself down and I end up zoning out for the third time. Next thing I know, I have salt being thrown at me, literal salt. And Kate is like, get out, get out. And at this point, I'm having a panic attack and just want to go home. I'm zooted, I'm tipsy, and I'm with a crazy person trying to exercise me over a panic attack I'm most likely having because of her. I ended up going home the next day. Friend! You just skipped a whole, like, the next day... You stayed the night over there? Girl. Girl. I don't know if you're the asshole, but but you ain't you, you ain't that smart right now. Till this day, I'm confused on what happened that night. The girl did end up apologizing. But I had to stop being friends with her after that. Girl. Well, I'm glad you decided to not be friends with them after that. Essentially, shortly after, there was this guy I slept with. Let's call him Diego. We never dated, just slept together, but we didn't really get along and we ended up on bad terms. Randomly, Kay came to me and was like, OMG, you know I was at this party Diego hosted and he claimed he doesn't even know you? That is so weird. I'd be like, you know what's weirder? That you're over here talking to somebody I'm smashing about me and I don't even fuck with you. And then you just hitting me up. A person I don't fuck, I don't fuck with you. And you're hitting me up just to tell me about you and Diego. Right. And if y'all don't know, we say no to Diego's in this, in this chat. No Diego's. Mm. The thing is, I didn't really care. Me and Diego Ben stopped talking. I didn't care that she was at Diego's party either. I didn't even care that she was wanting to befriend Diego because at the end of the day, the problem between me and Diego was between me and Diego, okay? But why were you talking about me, right? So I politely asked her why I was mentioned in conversation and she goes, well, me and Diego were just talking about people we both knew and I asked him if he knew you and he said no. Okay, but girl, you know that he knows her, so you're being messy, I wouldn't be surprised if that whole experience that you had with her, she like laughs about it with Jalen and the other people behind your back. I would not be surprised. I do think old girl sets you up to be like a joke. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like she wanted to get you drunk enough and shit to see if she can get some intel. Then she did a little razzle dazzle with the spiritual spooky bitch shit. And now she over here being messy with a dude that you smashing. And she knows you're smashing him because how would you know that OP knew him 
unless, right? And this is what she said. Now, in my head, I'm like, girl, you know he knows me. Because it really just seems like you're trying to instigate some shit. Because what is the reason? So I politely and respectfully tell her, I don't really care if she tosses Diego, but do not bring me up in conversation anymore. Especially considering not only the history between Diego and I, but me and her. And this hoe gonna say, I don't have to explain myself to you, and I pray you find healing. Oh, you pray now, bitch? Oh, you pray now? Oh, okay. News to me. Praying to fucking Beelzebub, headass. Like, girl, shut the fuck up. Like, big girl fuck you energy. What? Now, I didn't have to, and I honestly shouldn't have, but considering everything she's done, that shit just set me off, and I cussed her ass out, as you should. (sighs) Needless to say, I got blocked for the cuss out and also cut off by the whole friend group. Isn't that great? Isn't that great when that happens? Wow. If it makes you feel any better, I guarantee you she was over there clowning you to them anyway. Because why would she feel so comfortable clowning you to who she knew as a stranger at that point, Diego? Like, it just seems like she's just too okay with it. I don't know. I haven't spoken to any one of them since and don't plan to. I've been vibing alone. I did speak to Diego briefly early this week to apologize, make amends for some of the things that happened back then. Because come to find out... Um, Sarah, that girl, I forgot. That's another girl. Sarah and some other people in that group were instigating shit on my behalf without my consent or knowledge, setting me up in certain situations with one of Diego's, excuse me, one of Diego's female friends. Let me read that sentence again. I did speak to Diego briefly early this week to apologize and make amends for some of the things that happened back then because come to find out Sarah who was the girl that the crazy bitch was trying to get intel on and some other people in the group were instigating shit on my behalf without my consent or knowledge I'm going to assume that your friend group Which is interesting because Kay herself even says she was chatting it up with Diego at the party. Your friend group was instigating shit on your behalf. So were they trying to come to bat for you because y'all were in a situation ship or some shit? Because they said that there is a certain situation with one of Diego's female friends. Basically another bitch Diego's fucking. Look, at this age, didn't you say you were 21? Yep. At this age, bro, all that friends with benefits bullshit, no strings attached is so non-existent, bro. Like, it's just going to be drama. If there's no title on it, best believe y'all fucking other people. Like, it just kind of is what it is, bro. Um, But, I mean, that's just bound to happen. When you are mingling and mixing the friend groups into your relationships and all that shit, it seems like your other friends are mingled into the relationships. You over here knowing about Kay's breakup. K over here asking you about Sarah and Tasha and all this shit. Like, it's just, it's too enmeshed. And honestly, this might have been the best case scenario, them cutting you off. But girl, I would have left Diego back there with they ass. I would not have hit him up and made no fucking amends. I don't give a fuck if, like, bruh, having a common enemy is so short-lived. It's not a legitimate connection. Like, I can't tell you how many people... Like, I mentioned this earlier in the stream, the PTSD I had when I was around your age and shit like that from a friend group fallout and shit. I can't tell you how many people tried to form a common enemy with me over certain people in that group or shit like that. Just, oh, I should have known that they was this and that. But, But it doesn't stick because it's like, oh, that's the only thing we got in common. Like, okay, what the fuck? I wouldn't give a fuck if they did Diego dirty. Oh, sorry. My friends cock blocked you. So you couldn't fuck that other bitch while you were fucking me. Like, 
bruh, that probably isn't the situation, but I'm just saying there's no way that Diego was faithful the whole time. Like, come on now. Come on now. It's just fuck all of that shit, bro. Leave it all in the past. There's no point in fucking with that shit, bro. Y'all were not in a relationship. There don't need to be no amends. Nobody got, and I had to realize this when I got older. If your credit's not fucked up, you didn't have to, you not shit it out of rent money, nothing like that. Then like, it's just juvenile shit, bro. Just we don't got to talk to you no more. Um, I didn't really realize all of the, you know, manipulation and shit until recently. I didn't mention the specifics when apologizing to him though. I just straight up apologized. That is some bullshit, man. That's some bullshit. I wouldn't apologize to him. I wouldn't have. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters is if I just apologize. And he accepts my apology, and that's the end of that. Now I just hope to get out of my hometown and get away from all of these people. Well, man, look, I'm going to put the poll in the chat. It seems like the person that wrote the story thinks that they are the asshole. Um, I'm going to I'm going to save my thoughts, but mm. uh, shout out to uh, Bella Season for the follow. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, my little screen thing is broken, so you are getting a verbal shout out all stream. Hey. OK, let's put. Let's put the poll on the screen because, um, or in the chat, are they the a-hole? Because, look here, they are beating their own ass, all right? They just are like, you know what? I shouldn't have been messing with these messy people. Got me involved in this messy situation. I'm going to go apologize to this Diego. Or do you think that um, the, the friend group or the girl K is the asshole for you know stringing the web and being messy even though in the end of it all the friend group declared the original poster the messy one and cut them off what do you think guys what do you think do you think they cut them off before they could get cut off by person? Like what who who is the are they is the original poster the a-hole? Let's see. What did y'all think? What's the results are in? No. Y'all don't think that they are the a-hole. Well, y'all need to tell them that. Cause girl, you are giving yourself all the lashings. Like, I agree with the chat. I agree with the tribe. I do not think that you are the a-hole. Cause here's the thing. Even though you were the person to apologize, yeah, you were the bigger person, so what? That's that's a really fucking tough pill to swallow, but sometimes being the bigger person, you don't get no bounty points, you don't get shit for it. You know, I don't, I personally just do not think that you're the asshole. Um, damn, I just feel so bad on how that ended. This girl straight up like did spiritual warfare on your ass and you you beat your own ass in the end of that. Yeah, I don't know. I think you should give yourself more grace. Um, Let me know what you guys think. YouTube chat, if you guys want to put in the comments. Um, But I, I just I think you geared a little too hard on yourself with this. It happens. We have messy ass fallouts in our early 20s and shit, usually with a friend group. And then you come into adulthood and. And you realize that you have to have more in common with friends than just drinking and tarot cards and boys, you know. Um, so, yeah, I hope you all the I'm wishing you the best. I hope you found a, a, your new tribe or you found a tribe in us because I know what it's like and it's not fun. OK, this one is called My Dad is an Alki and I'm Tired. And I feel like I've read this one before, but I don't know. Hold on, let me skim it because. But yeah, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one better. I'm gonna read this one first. Was I in the wrong? And then see how much time left I have on the stream, because I'm skimming the the Alki story. 
and it's a little dark. Like I'm skimming and it's like, damn, it's just sad. Like it's giving Lifetime movie. No, not the Lifetime movie. Yeah, I got to skim that a little bit better. So here, let me read the one that I know probably doesn't need to be censored and stuff, okay? So this one is just called, Am I, Was I Wrong? Am I the a-hole? <laughs> hey, Naja and Tribe. I am a longtime subscriber of yours, and I've been watching you since the, damn, since the bandana upload. So you've been watching me since I was like a kid, bro. I just wanted to vent and maybe get another input <clears throat> or insight of something that happened to me a while ago. I've lived with my boyfriend, Josh, for five years. Boyfriend, Josh. And we have been together for six years. Damn. He is a Virgo man. And I am a Taurus woman. Shout out to all the Virgos and Taurus in the chat. Make sure you drop your sign. Now, for a long time, I've been hearing people complain about Virgo men. And I was just kind of like, what are you guys talking about? They are great. A little dramatic, but great. Yeah, I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard if Virgo men like actually, actually like you and they're not just playing, they will go like hand and foot for you like full golden retriever boyfriend right but being friends with virgo males i also see that side the dramatics the fucking sensitivity y'all say zero out of ten in the chat zero out of ten damn they said their dad's a virgo man they are very argumentative the virgo guy that i knew who's from miami cool as fuck we were not dating but we were friends we would get lunch and shit um but that's how he was. He was very sensitive, like hot and cold. I never knew what I was walking into that day, like how he was going to be. And I'm a Gemini. This is coming from a Gemini. Virgos are very hot and cold. We're both ruled by Mercury. So maybe that's why I was like, damn, I didn't expect you to be like that. That's more my MO, right? Hey, but yes, if they like you, they are very golden retriever. Y'all said Taurus men too. Man, look, I I had I was with a Taurus and they were golden retriever esque when like I would tell them like they would make me sandwiches and shit. But like there's levels to this shit. There's levels. There's levels to the golden retriever man, okay? I'm not even gonna say too 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 much, but my man, my man, my man. Okay, there's levels to this shit. That's all I'ma say. But Taurus women, in my opinion, are the most motherly of them all. But when it comes to Golden Retriever Boyfriend, I have heard Virgos are that are those guys. They're those guys. But it's very rare for a Virgo man to actually find someone they like. That I'm just, you know, all the Virgo men that I know are just so, like, uptighty and, like, don't even fucking date. They just be fucking off. Like, I don't know. But anyway, let me know. Let me know. That's how my that man had me tired. No, he did. My my fiance asked me about that period of my life the other day, and I was like, bro, I be blocking that shit the fuck out. Like, I be blocking that shit the fuck out. <laughs> I be blocking that shit out. But she said a Virgo man, huh? Well, Josh the Virgo man is the type that will play video games all day and complain about being tired and having too much on his plate. He's the type to just complain all the time, but never do anything about it. Well, what is he complaining about? Basically, just to have someone to talk to, just to have something to talk about. Oh, so he just be complaining just to talk is what you're saying? No, for real. What does he complain about? He's saying something. I, I always had to be on top of Josh to bathe, to brush his teeth and to clean see now I guess that's a stereotype I didn't I thought Virgo men were very cleanly oh mm. you had to remind that man to bathe and brush his teeth 
Josh would always have plates and trash all over the house. And when I would come home from work, at the time I was working two full-time jobs and going to school. After a while, I was becoming over, it was becoming overwhelming for me. So I confronted him. I would tell him it would be helpful if you helped out more around the house, seeing that I'm working two jobs and I'm in school. He said that it would not be a problem, but no changes have been made. I would still have to be up on top of him, and his excuse would be, just tell me what needs to be done and I'll do it. See, this is like that shit that I was talking about earlier. If you see it, do it. You see the dishes are fucked up, do the dishes. Why do I have to tell you you're home? I don't know. You're home. My dog really, uh, he just did not even try. I would still have to be up on top of him, and his excuse would be, just tell me what needs to be done, and I'll do it. Now, I'll be honest, I was not the nicest after a while, maybe about a month, when I did not see change. I would make little smart-ass comments here and there, which one day Josh told me that saying these things would hurt his feelings and make him feel bad about himself, but not bad enough to make the adjustment. Why does he sound like a grown-ass kid? Now, I come from a Caribbean household. Hearing these things are normal and never hurt my feelings. I just seen it as someone looking out for me. But just because it did not hurt mine does not mean it did not hurt his. So I stopped because I didn't want him to feel bad. My intention was not to hurt the people I love. After constantly asking for more help, I just stopped, sucked it up, and did it myself. No. No, because now he's going to know he could just keep doing that. Like, what? You're doing way too much. Josh is a whole lame. Josh is a whole lame and a whole dub. Like, you should want to pull your weight. Because that's how I was raised, too, unfortunately. And I see both sides because I get it, Josh. I was also that kid where I hated when my mom came home from work and would just bitch at all of us and be like, this isn't done and that's not done and I work all day and y'all don't do shit. Like, it did in a fucked up way motivated us kids to get the shit done so we wouldn't have to hear mommy's mouth right so I get what you're saying we're like that's how I was raised and that's you know it that's what worked but on the other hand I can also vouch for Josh because it does fuck you up in later development like not to make it about me I had to but I had to really unlearn certain behaviors in adulthood like I used to get really bad anxiety when my fiance would come home from work and I felt like I didn't clean or like stuff wasn't done. Like this man literally had to sit me down and be like, Naja, you are not a maid. Like you need to chill, bro. Like, but it's because I was conditioned growing up when the breadwinner gets in the home, they start snapping on you if shit's not done, you know? So I get it where you're like, damn, that that was like a reality check. Maybe this isn't the way to go about it. But he took that as, oh, I don't got to do shit because you're just going to do it anyway. So I just don't got to do shit. I don't need to hire a maid. I don't need to maybe call my mom up here to live with us so she could clean up like nothing. You're not going to have no solution. You're just going to put on another job on your girl. Yeah, Josh is playing her. Fast forward a few months. I wake up and I notice it's 2 a.m. And my boyfriend is it. It's 2 a.m. and Josh ain't home. It's 2 a.m. and Josh ain't home. It's 2 a.m. and Josh is not home. No call, no text, nothing. And I get a bad feeling. Josh better be out on the, the, the Las Vegas strip trying to get a job. Because what? 2 a.m. No call. No text. I get a bad feeling. Sometimes I'm pretty intuitive and I can tell when something bad is going to happen. 
I don't know specifically what, but I know some shit's about to go down. And I messaged him and he did not respond. That's right. Y'all said ain't nothing open at 2 a.m. except some legs. I know that's right. Josh is in someone else's home. Exactly. No, ma'am. I don't know specifically what, but I know something's about to go down. He doesn't respond. I become anxious. Like, where is he? So I decided to get up and get dressed to go to the gym and calm down. I normally do this to clear my head. Tell me why, as I'm getting ready to leave, a woman walks in with my boyfriend. As you're about to leave the house? A woman walks in with my boyfriend. The first thing he asked me is, what are you still doing up? In my home that I pay for, Josh? My anxiety became 10 times worse. So instead of confronting him and causing a scene, my my non-confrontational ass decided to still leave and just go to the gym. So let me get this straight. You're, you got your duffel bag. You're about to walk out to the gym of your house. You're about to walk out the front door of the house. And as you open the door to the house, Josh is there standing there with another bitch. Talking about, oh, what you do? And you walk past both of them? Oh, hell no. See, I would have politely just closed the front door, locked it, put the top lock on, and then opened the door. Ma'am, I don't know where you came from or how you got here, but you might want to get home. It's very late. I do not want to be responsible for you. I don't know you, but you could take him with you. Have a nice night. Bye. Bye. Shout out to, um, to Jiggy for the, for the follow on Twitch. Yo. That's just crazy to me. This is this is wild. As I'm driving to the gym, I decided that once I calm down, I will ask him what's up. I'm normally chill and calm and typically don't like to thoughtlessly go off on people because I have a bad temper when it comes out. I had a really bad experience when I was younger and it humbled me and made me change my ways. I typically like to calm down, reflect, and then handle the situation. As I'm working out, my mind is racing. I keep jumping to conclusions, going through different scenarios. Girl, there's only one conclusion. This man brought a woman to your fucking apartment at 2 in the morning. There is no other conclusion. What you think they're about to do? Play patty cake? Oh, Roger. Uh, what is that name? What's, his, what's the movie? Roger Rabbit? Head ass? You think they're fucking playing patty cake? The fuck you think they're doing at 2 in the morning? See, I'll be that friend that would have you locked up. I'd be on the phone with you. I'll be in the car at three. Girl. Yeah, he sleep. Girl, I could pull up to the gym. What's up? Oh, he got you fucked up, bitch. You better go back. I would, like, bruh, I would have you in jail. I would have you in jail. Oh, my gosh. I'm thinking of all the scenarios, and the more sensible one came to thought. Like, you know, my boyfriend doesn't drive. So maybe he caught a ride with somebody. Let's think. Would you, a woman, give a random man a ride at two in the morning? Girl, oh my God, I would have you in jail. Oh my God, I wish you would have called me this night. I wish you would have called me because I would have been like, girl, that don't make sense. So you think a woman by herself gave your hitchhiking bum Josh? No, no. My boyfriend is blowing up my phone. And when I finally answer, he asks, where are you? And my petty, upset, immature ass at the time responds. Yo, please prepare your ears. She ate. She ate. No crumbs. She ate. Close the kitchen, bitch. The man blowing up her phone. 
And when I and he I answer, he says, where are you? And my petty ass responds with sucking dick. Where the fuck do you think I'm at? I'm at the gym. I would have hung up the phone. <laughs> I would have hung up the phone, bro. I would have been crying, bro. What do you mean? Oh, my gosh. She said, I don't know why I said that to him, especially knowing his past. What's his past? What's his past? Why would you telling him that make him what? Did he get cheated on before or something? Girl, bye. They always love talking. Ooh, they love talking about that. Oh, I got cheated on. And man, it's sad because apparently Taurus and Virgos are supposed to be really good matches. He just don't want to level up. He don't want to level up. Talking about his past, girl. So I finish my workout. I calm down and I come home to the woman. The woman's still there. Oh, bitch, y'all got to fight. Yeah, I'm, and I'm not talking about you and the other woman. You and Josh, you need to whoop his ass. You need to put on some boxing gloves and beat him up. I do not condone DV. That's why I said put the boxing gloves on. Beat his ass. We're going to call the woman Peanut because she has a peanut-shaped head. So I come home, and there's... I come home to Peanut, the woman, a man named Pedro, and Josh sitting on the couch. The first thing Josh asks, is everything okay? And I say, yeah. And he says, see, this is what I'm talking about. I had you on speakerphone. Okay, well, whose fucking problem is that? Why is our business everybody fucking business? That's why you got embarrassed in front of all your little funky ass friends. Like, this would have pissed me the fuck off. And I know y'all, somebody in the ether is probably like, Naja, you emasculating this man. He emasculated his fucking self. You got your bitch out here working two fucking full-time jobs in this economy. She's trying to get a fucking degree, going to school. Now you trying to make her the fucking maid. And now you out at two in the fucking morning. Man, pissing me the fuck off. It's just worthless. Just worthless. I told him, all right, well, you could be upset because you were out late with no call or text and you got off work at 11. Anyway, we agree to disagree and squash it. Or so I thought. We squashed it and started getting to know each other better. After six years, after six years, how old are you? You don't say your age. You just say that y'all have been fucking with each other for six years. How much more do you need? to? What were y'all doing that whole time? The only way I could see this as being a thing is if like um, you guys started dating in high school or something and now you're just now going into the real world. But it seems to me like um, y'all have been in the real world for a minute. You say y'all been living together for like four or five years. Like, fuck. Damn. But I have noticed something about my about my Taurus gals as well as my Virgos out there. Y'all really don't know how to call shit quits when you get into it. It's almost like a a, a badge of honor. Like relationships be like badges of honor to y'all. Like y'all really don't know how to call it quits. Look, no shade. Gemini, we got all types of bad traits too, okay? But that's the one thing I've noticed just befriending y'all, having some of y'all in my family, Y'all don't know how to fucking call it quits. And I just want y'all to know that nobody thinks that you're lesser of a person. Nobody thinks that you're not cool, not successful, not that girl or that guy for breaking off a relationship. You're not a failure. I just want anybody out there who's struggling with that to know you will actually get way more praise because it's very hard for people to do to leave something that's comfortable and normal. Right. But. Taurus, Virgos, Earth signs are so heavy into repetition 
and uh, schedule, order, that type of shit, right? So I can see it's it's hard for y'all, bro. Y'all be struggling. Y'all be struggling. Shout out to Lil Faseli. I hope I'm saying your name right. Thank you so much for this follow on Twitch. Giving out verbal shout outs all stream. Are y'all annoyed with me? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, yes, and the stubbornness also plays a big part in it too. Like, no, I'm going to make this work. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. And it's like, girl, he don't want to work in more ways than one. He don't want to work. That's in my Squidward voice. That's three things that won't work. Okay. <laughs> like it's too much. So we agreed to disagree and, um, we squashed it or so I thought and started getting to know each other. Right. Um, we start getting to know each other better, talking, laughing it up. Mind you, I'm not the most talkative when we first met, when we first meet people, because I try to get a feel of the room. And if they're just not giving off good vibes to me. Oh, so basically, okay. So who you're starting to get to know better is Pedro and Peanut. All right. This makes more sense. Because I'm like, how long y'all been together? It like, what the fuck? So you're over here trying to be cool with people at two in the fucking morning and shit is wild. Mind you, I'm not the most talkative when I first meet people. Like when I tell you I would have kicked them at my house. I do not care. I'm that type of host. Like if I don't want you in my space, like I will be like, hey, where you where y'all about to go? What y'all about to get into your ass right out my house? Because it's two in the morning. What? So. I'm not the most talkative when I first meet people because I try to get a feel of the room and they're just not giving off good vibes. Kick them out. Like. Right. You don't even know who these people are. They're in your house. Pedro and Pina are dating, by the way. Guys, do not look. I'm going to keep it so real with you. I have been in a situation like that before where I thought that I was safe around a girl and that she was safe around my my dude or whatever because they have a boyfriend and they're good. And eh, wrong. That was a pimp tricking. It's <laughs> worst case scenario. The pimp is also trying to recruit your ass to like now they know where you live. Like, girl, they are not dating. That is her pimp. Look, <laughs> the world is crazy. Or are they trying to swing? That could be a thing. Or are they trying to swing? Apparently, these are new friends from his job that he met four months prior. My boyfriend, after a while, gets up to use the bathroom. And Peanut says, I can get her to talk to me. I'm good at that. Why don't you? Girl, y'all was right. Y'all was right. Why don't you want to have a threesome with Josh? How about because Josh doesn't deserve one. Josh can't afford one. Josh... Ain't Josh is not that guy. Like, he don't got it like that. That's a reward. What? I tell her, ooh, and girl, you better than me because I wouldn't have told her shit. I would have been like, this is none of your business. But I told her, me and Josh already discussed this. And I am not attracted to women. I went through a phase and just realized it wasn't for me. I'm not against threesomes, but I would rather do it with another man. Period. And she says, do you know how that sounds? I, as a female, am am one of the guys. And how do you think that sounds? Your man watching another man have sex with you. Girl, how do you think it sounds? Me, a bitch, watch another bitch fuck my man. A threesome is a threesome. As long as there's three people in there, it's a threesome, girl. Don't know what to tell you. It's giving pimp. It's giving pimp. It's giving pimping and coercion.
y'all said she would have got slid. Ugh, y'all tripping. Nah, this bitch, she trying to give it out too much. And that just lets me know that your man has been talking to her about this on the clock. You know that, right? Because it's giving pick me talking about I'm one of the dudes. I, I be acting like one of the men. All right, big burly bitch, calm the fuck down. Get into your feminine energy, ho. Calm down. Like, you're doing too much. You're doing way too much. You're doing way too much. I said, I don't care how it sounds. It's no different than with another woman. The threesomes are threesomes, like I said. And she talking about just say you're insecure. I know I'm an insecure female. <sighs> this bitch sounds dumber than a box of fucking nails. She said, I know I'm an insecure female and I wouldn't want to do something like that. So what are we talking about? If you didn't want to have a threesome with Josh, why are we talking about it? Oh, because that's probably what y'all be talking about at work. There's different types of cheating. All right. That's emotional cheating. When y'all just at work fantasizing, talking about sucking and fucking and what y'all going to do and what y'all wish y'all could do. And and then you over here down in the the uh, the MWM threesome when it seems like Pedro here, your man, likes seeing you flirt with Josh. So that might be something he's into, actually. And do I hear an HR in the chat? Yeah, this is crazy. I'm just looking at her like, okay, good for you. At this point, I'm feeling like they're trying to bully me into something. By then, Josh is walking out of the bathroom and here's what I said. And he goes, see, I told you. See, I told you. I already know that he at work talking about this shit. Oh, Josh would have to go. Now I'm getting mad because what the hell? You guys are talking behind my back. And you're this comfortable asking me this type of questions. I don't even know you. This had me very suspicious of Josh. I never thought I would have to look at someone I trusted as an op. So I grab a blizzy to calm my nerves because I'm starting to get anxious again, like real bad. To the point where I feel my heart racing, stomach hurting, and my head pounding. I'm not the type to make a scene in front of people. So I'm thinking I cannot wait for them to leave. Girl, I would have kicked them out. I would have kicked them out. Oh, my gosh. Man, shout out to all the first time chatters. I see y'all, bro. What's up? What's up? Yeah, this is too much. So I'm trying to send signals to Josh that I was getting uncomfortable, but he was not catching on. Yes, he did. He just didn't want Peanut to leave because he's like, I might be able to get lucky. Peanut is asking these questions, fired something pent up in him, and he started ranting about what I said about having threesomes with other men is messed up. And then he starts talking about issues we've had for years that I thought we squashed, talking about me like I'm his child. Mind you, these issues are very minor and petty, at least to me. The girl starts laughing. She's like, how did we even get here? Very minor and petty. She just proceeds to laugh it up even more. Look. <sighs> Pedro's sitting there silently, a fly on the wall. Because Pedro's used to this. Pedro is like, I know Josh wants to fuck my bitch. Like, And I was just hoping that maybe if I came over here, Josh would let me fuck his bitch. It's so obvious what's going on. This dude is nasty. He's not safe. And I know that y'all got history and shit, but I really hope if you send me an update, y'all aren't together because this isn't safe at all. Bro is a sexual deviant, a lazy, broke bitch. Like, look. So Josh keeps bringing up this incident where I went out with friends and had to come home without panties on. Girl, you done danced yourself out the drawers. Now, mind you, I had them on the whole night. It wasn't until I got in the car to leave that I took them off because they were uncomfortable. 
please tell me I'm not the only woman that does this. Girl, I thought you were about to say you were drunk and you had like dribbled in your panties a little bit. As a girl, we've all ditched some panties, bro. Shoot, I even had a whole story time. An old lady done ditched some panties at my job. If you a girl, you ditch panties before. But what you don't do is you don't dispose of the panties in disgraceful ways, bro. That's how you keep your can- your panties clean is you have extra panties. In my lotto ice spice voice, like, it is what it is. He's just being weird. Um, My boyfriend was cheated on in every relationship he's been in, so I understand why he's upset, but that was four years ago. And I'd be like, bro, I am not your old bitch. Don't do it. I, I'm pretty sure that I'm the only girl that's ever been loyal to him. Yeah, because it's really hard to find someone attractive that literally acts like a child. He's always accusing me of cheating because he's cheating himself. And I guarantee you he left out a bit of that story of all the girls cheating on him. I bet you it was a get back. But I digress. He's always accusing me of cheating. He makes my chest hurt, like, with the guilt. And I know anyone would be suspicious of this. I get it, but I'm not a cheater. No, girl, we're suspicious of him. If I tell you what happened and why, you should be able to trust me. Anyway, he proceeds to talk about how on his birthday I made him feel like an outsider. For his birthday, I picked a video game themed restaurant. Oh my God. Initially, it was supposed to be me and him that day, but his main friends canceled on him and I saw how sad he was. And I said, call your other people and have them come instead. Upon arrival, I asked everyone what would they like to do or play and he chose to isolate on the couch with one of his friends of 10 plus years and play Halo while everybody else wanted to play board games. I kept trying to get him to be a part of the group and play with us and interact. And he was like, no. I entertained his friends while he did that. And one girl just kept talking about hooking up. Pause. I know a Taurus and Virgo couple. I haven't spoken to them in a long time, but when I did used to hang out with them. This used to constantly be the dynamic, the Virgo being the stick in the mud, the I don't want to interact. I'm going to disengage, but I want everyone to know that I'm disengaged. And then the Taurus, usually the Taurus woman constantly. Oh, no, it's okay. He's fine. It's all good. Don't worry, guys. Everything's all good. Are you good? Are you okay? Are you having fun? He's not having fun. (sighs) And I've seen it in real life before. And I'm just like, bro, this must be so miserable. But again, like I said, they be sticking that shit out for the long haul, bro. They be sticking that shit out. You know what I think it is? I think it's they're just like, I put so much fucking work into it. Maybe that's why. Because, bro, when I tell you, like, with this, I would have treated him like a fucking child. I just brought your new friends here and you don't want to play with them. Everybody go home. Sorry. He doesn't want to. Josh doesn't want to play. Everybody go home. Like, I would have treated this man like a fucking child. Like, what? So I entertained his friends while he did that. And one girl just kept talking about uh, at the party, just talking about sex and being a virgin and not ever having a boyfriend at 27 the whole night and how she wanted a relationship and to lose her V card. No judgment, but damn, we get it. Like if you want to lose it that bad, pick somebody you like and do the deed. No, seriously, if you're in your 20s, bro, just go and do it, bro. To be honest, I think he felt like an outsider because he was growing apart from his friends and he used me as an excuse. It seemed like everyone had a great time, even him. And I asked him at the end of the night, did you have fun? And he's talking about, hell yeah. He also brought up how I made him feel bad on my birthday, my birthday, because I wanted him to stay with me and not leave me alone and look at the religious art in the museum. Oh, so you want to go on a little museum date? Josh made the biggest scene in front of everyone and screamed, I don't like religion, and walked off. Josh, I'm not religious either, but we can respect some good old-fashioned Catholic art like it eats, okay? Get you some nice, uh, what are, the, what are those called? The glass, the, the rose glasses that be in the, the churches. It eats. It's a time. Why are you so angry? It wasn't even religion for real. It was just Renaissance art. (laughs) 
I thought that was like, what? Um, I thought that was it. I didn't know that he was har. I didn't know he was harboring all of this. Um, and I'm not going to get into too many details about what every little thing he said. We had aired out in front of them, but he hair, he aired out my, he aired out my own personal issues with like, um, let's just say depression, some of the side effects of depression that people will do to themselves and everything. And I just felt so betrayed. This man is an op run for the hills, run for the hills. So he let it all out in the living room and they decided it's time to leave after getting the tea on our relationship and talking about how, thank goodness they don't have problems like us in my house, in my house. Mind you, they are a baby relationship. They just started dating five months ago, and they don't live together. As they're about to leave, Peanut has the nerve to say, I hope we can be friends. And I just look at her like, girl, what? We must have, like, I didn't even know we had problems. Ever, and you talking about, I hope we can be friends. We must have minor disagreements, but never anything seriously. And he walks them to the car and comes back upstairs and continues to just scream at me. I try to calm down and handle the issues and find a solution. I really thought we let this go and move forward. Where is this coming from? And he keeps saying they want me to break up with you. Yeah, I bet they do. Because that little uh, woman, man, man threesome that you're trying to hide from. Yeah, Pedro want that ass. He wants you. He likes you and he wants you. And they're grooming you to get you right where they like you and they want you. You're dumb, Josh calling you narcissistic and shit and I say who cares what those people think what do you think I am not a horrible girlfriend I give you rides because you don't have a car or a license I cook for you I listen to you when you're low and uplift you I buy you gifts on birthdays and holidays when you need me to you work two jobs I'll name some more stuff you work two jobs full-time jobs I'm pretty sure you give him some benefits I'm sure he's a fucking dependent you're in school so that you could get a better paying job to further support him. Y'all so funny. Y'all like, you should have locked the front door when he walked to the car. No, dead ass. Dead ass. Dead ass. She said, you are literally draining. I can see why your other girlfriends cheated on you. <laughs> now that last statement was out of pocket, but I was getting pissed and my filter had just gone. And this man says, I pay for things around the house. She said, Josh, you're supposed to do that. You live here. Like what? Anyway, to make a long night short, we end up having a heart to heart and come into under an understanding. I'm not about to play with you. I am not about to play with you. Let him go. Let him go. Let that man go, bro. He said he blew up on me like this because he felt like I was hiding from him and not talking to him. Girl, if it were up to him, you would have been passed the fuck out sleep at two in the morning and he would have been in the living room with Peanut and Pedro by himself shooting the shit. That's what he thought he was walking into. He didn't want for all y'all to hang out. If anything, he was annoyed that you were up and had to include you. Honestly, after this happened, it took me a long time to trust him again and be able to open up. I was really hurt after this and fell into a bad depression. Damn. I felt like he could have come to me and sat me down. As a matter of fact, to strangers, because I never met them before that day. Or, Yeah, bro, he totally is an op. He's an op. He's an op. He's a whole op. <sighs> mm, I'm making the poll right now. Is the person in the wrong? I might even have to add a third option. Thank <laughs> you. 
So let me know, y'all. Here's the poll. Is the person who sent in this story, were they in the wrong? Are they the a-hole? Did they overreact? Did they decide to jump the gun on the man? Because at the end of the day, he wasn't cheating. He wasn't doing none of that. Or is Josh the asshole because he's a bum? He exposed her to the co-workers and... um. That's pretty much it. They did come to a resolution. So if you think that, like, no, they weren't the asshole, nothing needs to be changed, just vote no, period. Because they did come to a resolution as a couple, and at the end of the day, it's their business, right? But if you don't think they're the asshole, but you think this is crazy, click no, what the hell. Or if you think she was wiling, just click yes, because it's like, girl, he wasn't cheating, technically. Let's see. Yep, everybody pretty much agrees no, but what the fuck? Like, girl, what? So y'all still together? All I want to know is, are y'all still together? Please send me in an update, because I need to know. I need to know ASAP if y'all are still together. And if not, I need to know how you ended it. I need to know how your school journey is going. This man is exhausting. He is an emotional cheater. He talks about you behind your back. He sounds like a fucking hating sassy boots. That is a sassy ass man. He's a hater. And I know he does have a job. I know I'm calling him a bum, but I'm only calling him a bum because of his behavior. He does work one job and he gets off of that job at 11. And instead of coming home and spending time with you, he decides to spend time with another dude's girlfriend who like it's so obvious they're all on some sexual swinger why who else pops up at an apartment at two in the morning like look look the only way I could think that she was in the wrong is for just not locking the door in his motherfucking face when them people showed up <laughs> because I I don't know that's just wild to me is up everybody Welcome to the spooky stream. If you do not know who I am, hi, hello. My name is Nadja, aka the Voodoo Child. And this is my Tribe Tea segment where you guys send in your stories if you need advice, anything like that. Um, we go live on Twitch, and I'm gonna put the Twitch fam on here because yesterday my chat wasn't working. So I'm gonna put y'all on the screen if y'all want to say hello to YouTube. If you guys want to catch me live when I'm like actively doing this, if you're watching this on YouTube, hey, hello, what's up? Um, if you want to be in the chat, like live chat, I go live on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at 11 a.m. OK, so if you want to catch me on there, interact with me and stuff on there, I'm going to be here. Um, Yeah, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, guys? What's up? Y'all said, y'all about to, yeah, send in all the tribe tees. Send in the tribe tees. You guys have sent in so many tribe tees for October. I'm actually good on spooky stories. We have enough for this stream and the stream next week on actual the day after Halloween because I think Halloween's on a Tuesday this year. Um, Excuse me. But, yeah, we have enough spooky stories. As of right now, if you guys want to send in any entries, uh, next month we're doing Thanksgiving clapbacks. So if you have any family dilemmas, you can go ahead and send in any entries um, because we're doing family uh, problems, Thanksgiving clapbacks, stuff like that. And I also would like to start a new segment where we start including maybe some voice notes so we could start hearing you guys. Little less of me talking, more of y'all emotion and stuff like that. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. It's still in the works, but we definitely need some family clapbacks and stuff. So thank you guys so much for submitting your Halloween stories, but we got enough now for the rest of the month. And um, yeah, I'm about to get into it because we have a few spooky stories to get into today. Um, We have the first one is called, I think my brother was possessed. Another brother being possessed. Y'all remember another one? Oh, hell no. The second one is called, Has Anyone Else Felt This Way? The third one is, I have quite the unusual dream type story to share, and I hope it does not freak y'all out too much. That is the whole title. 
the next one is just called it's spooky time b and then the last one is why is this happening to me well damn okay let's get let, let me get into this let me scoot my little computer up get comfortable make sure you guys get your your hot chocolates your hottie toddies whatever y'all got to get y'all in the mood this season regroup all right um because these stories are kind of long so I don't want to bs and ramble so the first one I think my brother was possessed okay hey tribe I've had one of my stories read before. However, I want to keep it anonymous because it's kind of not relevant. And y'all let me know if I was delusional or not. Okay, so I'll let you guys do a little poll at the end. Because I want to know if y'all think she delusional or not. I'm just going to leave a little note of that. So, um... I've never considered myself spiritually in tune, but I have had a few instances where I did feel a connection, I guess you could say. For example, I walk into stores that sell voodoo items. Girl, where do you live at where they just casually got voodoo items? Pause. Um, And suddenly my head will start to feel fuzzy and heavy. It feels like I'm moving in slow motion or something. And this doesn't happen often, but every time it does, I'm in a place with spiritual objects and I feel as if I'm becoming physically ill. Immediately after I leave, I begin to feel better. Now look, they say this happens to some people. I'm not trying to say you a lion or anything um, because there are some people whose spirit be getting uh aggravated with uh what's it called going to the christian shop you know it it, some people just are spiritual you can go to the the bible store and your demons start to cut the fuck up you know like hey right like are you in louisiana or something because i don't just see just a voodoo store everywhere you know i would i would be very uh fearful no shade and this is coming from the voodoo child I respect all religious practices. I don't play with people's stuff. And then you feeling fuzzy headed and stuff. Yeah, no, I'll be scared. I'll be scared. So my family decided to um, take a weekend vacation and I stayed at a well-known older hotel. It's the oldest house in that area, which happens to be located at one of the most haunted places in the world. Again, not going to tell they tea. They let me know where they at, but I'm not going to tell they tea. This hotel is known for being haunted, and it was one of the only buildings left standing after a catastrophic event. I'm going to have to look it up now. Now I need to know. Now I need to know. What happened? What happened there? Oh, uh uh-uh. Something catastrophic happened, and they over here talking about it's a five-star resort with a spa. Wow. Haunted spa. Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, y'all. I'm reading real quick. Yada, yada. Just a shame. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. So it was a natural event. It was a natural. So, because I'm like, okay, this is in the South now. I'm just making sure there wasn't like a revolt or something because we've had a spooky story sent in before and they went on a plantation. It was crazy. Yeah. So I just needed to make sure, you know, I had to make sure. This is the last building standing after like a natural event. So this hotel is known for being haunted. Um, It's also well known for being the site of where people go to end their life. Let's just say that. Okay. Why? A woman was waiting for her husband to return from sea, but when he didn't arrive on his ship, she got worried. And one of her husband's friends told her that he had died at sea. So out of grief, 
she decided to wear a rope necklace, if y'all get the drift. And even though she did that to herself at that location, the man returned three days later on a different ship. And it is said that on the fifth floor of this building, it's the most haunted because that is the room that she occupied. Look here. Not y'all got an actual ghost. I'm over here thinking it's because the building's old and no, you have an actual ghost. I would not want to say in no American Horror Story ass. I saw y'all saying in the comments. I don't want to say in no American Horror Story ass hotel with no history of no lady jumping off of the thing. You got all this lore. Like, bro, no. Abort mission for real. Like, ooh, it's time to go. To my, that man's friend at sea was a hater, right? He was probably trying to get at bro's wife, Loki. And then fumbled the bag completely because she just, what do the TikTokers say? Unalive themselves. Um, Y'all said the Cecil Hotel? No, it's not the Cecil. I'm, she wants to be anonymous, so I'm not going to do too much. But, um, yeah, that, <sighs> I would have been like, yeah, we can't stay here, fam. So the fifth floor is the most haunted since this is the one she occupied. The fifth floor was the floor that we were staying on. Why would they even rent that shit out? For one, why would they rent it out to the public? I would have just turned that place into a historic building because that's creepy as hell. And then have you seen like on social media when people do stay at like haunted resorts and like um, murder sites or stuff like that, that's that have been turned into like these weird touristy things like. I've seen videos where people will be in their hotel room, like minding their fucking business, and then there'll be a knock at the door and a tour guide will be like, hey, we just need to show around. I always want to know, why do you feel comfortable sleeping there? Why are y'all exploiting this crazy thing? Honestly, it needs to be turned into like a museum. And that should have been that. Because it withstood a natural disaster. That should have been the first reason why, right? And then, fuck fuck the, the tragedy, honestly. I would have just been like, yo, let this lady's spirit rest. Cut it out. Leave the lore alone, you know? I don't know, man. So we're staying on the fifth floor with the ghost. Me being into ghost adventures at the time, I was ready to encounter paranormal activity. Friend, you're wilding. I had my phone constantly recording audio and footage, and I was constantly taking pictures. Don't worry, guys. We do not have any uh, pictures or photos today, okay? Don't worry. Um, I was at, girl, no, you were not. I was asking them, are you here with us? Is anyone in this room? Give us a sign if you are here. Friend, that's when you get what you ask for and you get scared. Like, that is like the the most Caucasian in a scary movie shit. You over here talking about some, can anyone hear me? Are you here? Make your presence known. All right, now it's all fun and games until they, you're like, ah, no. All fun and games, right. And then when they respond or when they possess you in the night, because isn't this title Joe brother got possessed? Oh, my gosh. Why are you speaking to the ghost? Of course, my mom did not want to encounter any spirits, and she was just making fun of me the whole time. Later that day, we went down to the hotel museum, which is also rumored to be haunted. So the, so they did make it both. So they did. Why did they turn it into, why didn't they just say F the lodging 
and just make it a hotel. Y'all are so funny in the chat talking about, are you here with us? And am, Pooh, I am. And are. <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all are amazing. So later that day, we went down to the hotel museum, which is also rumored to be haunted. My brother, who was 15 at the time, decided he was going to stay behind alone in the room. The museum is on a lower is on the floor lower than the lobby. So it's right under probably basement level, whatever. It was very eerie and quiet down there, but I didn't notice anything weird. We decided to eventually head back to the room. As we're walking up to the door, we notice it is wide open. Immediately, alarm bells are going off because we left my brother in the room. So we opened the door fully. Well, you said it was wide open, girl. And he's and he's on the bed doing something on his phone. And we're just confused about the door being open. So we ask if he went anywhere or if he opened the door for somebody. And he says no and that he's just been there relaxing. We know for a fact that my stepdad shut the door behind him. We heard it slam. So we were weirded out by it. Later that night, I'm falling asleep. So I tell my mom to leave the light on. Girl, not you told your mom to leave the light on. You was scared. Why were you playing with them spirits? See, it's all fun and games when you be messing with ghosts and shit. Talking about, is anyone here? When the sun is out, right? As soon as the sun goes down and you are in that bed by yourself in the dark, that's when people really want to come out and tell you that they here. Like... Now you spooked, right? Now you now you spooked. It's not fun in games at all. <laughs> Look. I was low-key scared. Something would be staring at me in the night, and I didn't want to wake up in the middle of the night to something scary. So keep in mind, me and my brother were sharing the bed, and of course, with the split in the middle dividing us, so no sweet home Alabama girl chill we got siblings we understand like it's no weird shit um so i'm asleep but suddenly i wake up not a groggy wake up but wide awake eyes pop open of course it is pitch black in the room my mom eventually turned off the light at some point so i check the time and it's 3 a.m of course Y'all, 3 a.m. Whatever happens to you, friend, I don't even know what to tell you. 3 a.m. is the witching hour. 3 a.m. is when worlds collide. 3 a.m. is when you are way more susceptible to get got by something on a different plane let's just say that shoot even if you think about it like because like I said earlier I respect all beliefs and stuff I think all beliefs are very interesting and should be respected um even people who believe in like alien abductions when does that happen usually three in the morning like when people have uh premonitions and stuff three in the morning Look, look, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you, whenever I wake up in that hour and I have something on my mind, I write it down and I go back to fucking sleep. And then I wake up and I look at it and then usually it is relevant, right? But there's a reason why that shit is, I don't know what it is about that time. It's just odd. So I'm laying there, 3 a.m., and I start hearing what sounds like slow footsteps with about three to five seconds in between each one, and no one in my room is awake, so I know it's not my family. So I'm terrified, hoping that if I stay still, whatever is in the room would think that I'm asleep. 
I'm saying I'm covered in the blood of Jesus in my head. Yes. Just trying to get my mind off of what I'm hearing. I'm thinking this is not fun. I do not want to talk to spirits anymore. Look, the only spirits you should be talking to or trying to talk to is your own ancestors. You should be trying to talk to pray to your grandmama. You should be trying to pray to your grandfather. You should be trying to pray to your uncle, your great uncle, great aunt. You should not be over here trying to freaking summon a scorned widow from the who is being used as a capitalistic tool in our current demand. Like it's just so much raw, right. That switch up be real though. That switch up be real. Yeah. She do need to throw that blanket over her head. She'll be safe. She just need to throw the blanket over her head. Now I just want to go home. I feel you. My brother starts talking. Like he starts saying something and I'm like, what did you say? And he says, clear as day. I just wanted to show you. Show me what? Show me what? Show me what? Now, my brother does not talk in his sleep. And my brother didn't want to show show me anything before. So I don't know what he's talking about. So at this point, I'm terrified. I've come to the conclusion that we're going to have to leave my brother here at the hotel. What? Y'all are funny talking about what if he just broke into a dance? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think he is gone and a spirit has him. I ended up staying awake until sunrise. I asked him if he remembers anything, and he says no. He acted normally, and nothing was off about him. I'm not sure if this was scary, but I think that the spirit was trying to talk to me through my brother. Maybe it was responding to me when I was asking questions earlier. Girl, ever since then, I have not wanted to play... um, she said, ever since then, I have not wanted to play Ghost Adventures anymore. No, because you really were trying it, bro. Like, you over here trying to, hello, is anybody there? Like, bro, what are you doing? Man, look. They said, it's not for me. I hope y'all enjoy the story. It's one of the better memories from before my mom just became mentally and emotionally out of it, which turns out she was the whole time. Damn, T. I got out of that situation, so it's okay. I might send a story about my dog teleporting. Your dog teleported. Girl, you need to leave them drugs alone. What are you talking about? The dog teleported to where? Mars, girl? Let me know if y'all are interested. Duh, we're interested. Have an amazing, spooky, spirit-free day. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. All right, y'all. So I just made like a little baby poll. Um, let me know. Do y'all think that she is the Lulu or do y'all think, let me know in the chat, do y'all think if, is she the Lulu? Like, is this a real ghost type shit? Did, was that her actual paranormal experience, you know? Or was she looking for something and then was just trying to make it match? What do you guys think? Do you guys think it was an actual uh, possession of sorts? Or do you think that there was no ghost since nobody really appeared? Um, let me know. Let me know. And then I'm going I'm to let you guys know what I think in one second here. Because I, I have some theories. I've got some theories. Because it can go either way. I mean, it does have historical significance, you know. 
let's see. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Is she the Lulu? Y'all said, no, it's a ghost. Okay, so y'all think that it's a ghost. Okay, here's what I think. I think that it's, I'm not going to invalidate anyone's experience, but I do think that there is a lot of, because y'all know me, I got to try to at least explain it a little bit with some type of logic. I do could see how if you are asleep at a hotel, and this hotel is huge, by the way, I looked it up. I could see how you could hear footsteps that aren't yours. It's an old building, you know. Um, also, I feel like everybody talks a little bit in their sleep, you know. They may not have a full-blown conversation, but I would have asked my brother, like, did you have a dream last night? Like, what the fuck? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't want to say that you didn't experience anything only because you did say you felt creepy when you went to the basement. You were on the same floor. But I also feel like fuck around and find out. You shouldn't be fucking with no damn try, trying to invoke a presence and stuff. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm split 50-50. Only cuz I feel like a possession isn't something you just forget either. Like I feel like your brother would have been very adamant like no, something is wrong because usually spirit attaches itself to kids. Not so much teens and stuff though, but to kids. They usually do. They'll show themselves, but the older you get and the more logic you have, like you don't be you don't psych yourself out with certain shit like that. Um Y'all said it could be a placebo. Like, they're telling you all the history about the place, so you start imagining. No, for real. Like, I've been to a few haunted places here locally, but I haven't physically seen shit myself. But I have felt like, damn, like, this is heavy, you know? Like, that is undeniable. That's why I'm like, I'm not taking that from you. Like, that's undeniable. But, um, shoot, the tribe thinks you had a ghost, child. The tribe thinks you had a ghost. So, hey. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Um, but I'm about to get on to the next one. Not the Haunted Mansion, girl. No Eddie Murphy. You know they're making a new one? A new Haunted Mansion? I've been talking about Disney a lot. What the fuck? Um, I think it's just because they're buying everything. Like, all of the stuff I used to like, Star Wars, all that. They're just buying it. Now that I think about it, it's like they just be buying everything. Let me chill. Let me not get on my Disney rant. Damn, Disney. All right, this next one is pretty long. So strap up, guys. It's called, Has Anyone Felt This Way? And yeah, I think the Haunted Mansion one, the new one did already come out. I want to watch it, see if it's any good. Tiffany Haddish is in it. No, thank you. Done. That's all you had to say. <laughs> And it doesn't even have anything to do with her scandal. It's just like, she's just not funny to me. She's just not funny. She ruins every movie. She's just loud. Like, she's just not funny. Um, has anyone else felt this way? Damn, this this little hood kind of itchy. Oh my God. I hate that superhero ass fabric. Um, <laughs> hey, Naja, I want to start off by saying I love your videos. And I have been watching you since I was a sophomore in high school and now I am a sophomore in college. That is crazy. Congrats on your educational endeavors. Um, I hope I have not led you astray. <laughs> she says, I love seeing your growth over the years. And I'm still as big a fan as ever. Well, thank you so much. Um, She says she's not scared of anybody knowing her. But I'm going to keep her anonymous. She is a Gemini sun, a Scorpio moon, and an Aries rising. Shout out to all my Gemini, Scorpios, and Aries in the chat. So, I want to see if anyone can relate or tell me what's going on. So, ever since I was a kid, I have always been aware of the presence of spirits. Until I was three, I lived in a house with my mom and dad, and we had to move because I was freaking my mom out so much by talking to the spirits in the home. Girl, 
Nacho mom was weirded out like you're doing too much. That's the thing. My friends with kids like all of the people that were teen parents when I was like a teenager who has like like their kids are itty bitties, but they're still kids. They be the ones that be talking about the little paranormal shit that they be doing, their little creepy asses. And it'll never be like a, um, mommy, I saw a ghost. Like, it's not like that. It's like you'll be talking to them, and then they'll just go like this. <laughs> and you're like, who are you laughing at? No. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yo. I'd be so fucking scared, bro. I'll be so fucking scared, man. Look. Shout out to all my first time uh people in the chat, by the way. Shout out to y'all. Um, but yeah, these kids be scary. So I used to have a little snow white kaleidoscope. And I felt like the spirits used to reveal themselves to me through the kaleidoscope. Oh, uh-uh. Many times I went to my mom and tried to show her the people who I only saw through the telescope. So is it a telescope or a kaleidoscope? Because a kaleidoscope's the one that's all, like, mixed up. Eventually we moved, but I don't know if they followed me, like, when we moved or what, but there were different spirits at the new house. But it felt worse and better at the same time. What? My family moved to this new house when I was three, and I still live there till this day. What? As soon as we moved there, I was scared to sleep in my room. I used to be scared of everything. I told my mom that I could feel God watching me, which was the only way I could articulate what I was feeling. One night as I was sleeping in my parents' bed, I woke up in the middle of the night, and my parents were gone. A man that I did not recognize was sitting in a chair across from me and he had a dark aura. And I just remember being so scared. I was calling out for my mom over and over and she never came. To this day, I don't know if it was a dream, sleep paralysis or reality. It certainly felt real. But if it was, where were my parents? Oh, hell no. And then the fact that you remember this and you were only like three. Like, this is traumatizing. Oh, my God. For a few years, I had a reoccurring dream of me sleeping in my bed and my mom enters the room. I wake up in my dream and something doesn't feel right. So this is a dream, by the way. This is a reoccurring dream. My mom is pretending to be nice to me, and I can tell she's pretending. And so I call her out on it, and I say, you're not my mom, not the other mother, girl. And the thing pulls off the mask of my mom, revealing a demonic-looking creature. Oh, no. It's trying to sew buttons in your eyes, girl. I call out for my mom, and the creature says she can't even hear you. She she will never hear you. Excuse me. Every night I woke up before anything happens to me, but one night I have the dream, and this time I don't wake up. I start screaming as the creature approaches me, and when it gets to me, it wraps its cold fingers around my throat, and I woke up. I couldn't breathe when I woke up. I literally could not get air in my throat. And I jumped out of the bed and ran to my mom's room. She's normally a very light sleeper, but this night she would not wake up. I shook her, but I still could not speak. I ran towards the living room, and at this time my dad worked nights, so he had just got home. And he saw me, and the strangest thing happened. When he grabbed me, whatever was blocking my throat went away, and I could breathe. I was scared to sleep after that, and to this day, my dad still talks about it. I never told him about the dream because he doesn't believe in the paranormal, but that night forever lives in both of our memories. What 
the heck? So the ghost, cho- it choked you out from the inside. That to me sounds like sleep paralysis that happened to you, though. Like all jokes aside, all Coraline, other mother jokes aside. Um, what? I'm just in shock that you got choked in the dream and then you woke up and you still couldn't breathe. But the fact that your dad can corroborate your story also is wild. Like, very W dad, for sure. My cousin came over for a sleepover when I was around 12 or 13. We were sleeping in the same bed. You know, cousin, head to feet. We know, bro. We get it. I had a dream. that not it sad that in today's day and age you got to explain that because the the adult industry has just gotten so incestuous, like, like what like it's so sad that we got to explain like no like I was in the same bed with my brother but it wasn't like I was in the bed with my cousin but it wasn't like that like damn anyway I had a dream that somebody dropped a package off at my house during the sleepover and I opened the door and grabbed it my cousin walks into the room and says hey that's my package and I'm like no it's my package Mind you, in my dream, I have no idea what's in the package and why the hell would it be hers and this is my house. Anyway, I run away from her with the package and she's chasing me. Then I wake up and my cousin says out loud, why would you take my package? And I said, it wasn't yours, it was mine. And we fell back to sleep, only to realize what happened the next morning. What? That is crazy, bruh. Now that, that is some shit that had, like, if you over here, you catch your sibling or something sleep talking and y'all just woke up from the same fucking dream. Like, then they said them and this cousin had the same imaginary friend named Ketty who we played with for over a year until the imaginary friend showed us how she died and we realized she wasn't imaginary and we pushed her out of our heads. This house needs to be burned down. You still live in this house? Girl, when you decide you want to have kids, maybe don't have them there. Like, what? And it's like, yeah, at least you know you're not crazy, but it would also scare me to know, like, damn, there's really, like, something going on in this house that is hyperactive and strong like I would be so scared but ignorance is bliss right you're a little kid you're you're chilling like yes it's time to burn the house down it's time to burn it down when I was 15 the spirits in my home reached an all new height before all I had experienced were these somewhat isolated events but now I had reoccurring things that could no longer be ignored At this time, my family was going through a lot, and I spent most of my time home alone. I guess the demons took this as their chance to act up. Oh, no. I would be doing my homework in my room, and I could hear chairs moving, cabinets opening and closing, slamming, just a ruckus. When I would walk out of the room, nothing would be out of place. Oh, fuck no. I constantly felt watched. I had nightmares most nights, and I was seeing figures around all of the time. To make matters worse, every single night I woke up at 3.33. Girl. And I haven't missed a night waking up at that time for almost a year. All of my sleep always felt restless, and I was tired all of the time. I've had mental health struggles since I was about one. Damn. How do you be, girl, not you said one. So your parents told you you had mental health struggles? 
But this is when I was at my worst. Here's the weird part. Weirder than this. Like, this is weird, bro. This is actual paranormal stuff because ghosts literally will drain you of your energy, make you lose sleep so that you can't be the best you you could be because the one up we do have on demons, all of that stuff is that we are living. We are alive. We are breathing. And depending on what faith you have, you have other abilities in this plane as well, right? Girl. So here's the weird part. And I know you're thinking it gets weirder. Yes, it gets weirder. During this time when I was being tormented in between nightmares, I would have completely insignificant dreams. Things like my teacher saying something in class or friends making certain jokes. And then they would come true. They would come true frequently. I told my mom and she didn't believe me. Eventually, this period of my life ended, the nightmares went away, and all these dreams persisted. They were just more spread out, rare, and always insignificant. Oh, my God. However, recently, in my adult life, the dreams have returned and they are overwhelming. Who said Who said this in the chat? Um, Nisi, yes, thank you. Girl, this ghost has seen you in every stage of life. At this point, leave me alone. Let me live. Damn. You got a chance. Can I get one? And yep, lack of sleep will definitely make you hysterical. So now the dreams have returned and they're overwhelming. They come all of the time now. I get dreams three to five times a week, sometimes nights in a row. They come in fruition all of the time. Oh, my gosh. And now I can literally predict what is going to happen before it happens because I have seen it before. I told my mom again. She's not as spiritual as me. I'm just like, oh, you said this before, but she brushed it off. However, recently I got the feeling I get when my dreams are becoming reality, which is feeling similar to when water is up your nose and deja vu. So I told what my mom was I told my mom what was going to happen and it actually happened. I was about to say, girl, all you have to do is prove that to me is just start telling me the future. Let's go get these numbers real quick. Let's go, let's go do something. Like what do you mean? Girl, I need to see something. My mom was shocked but still skeptical, but I think she's more scared than anything else. Also, recently, I got a new coworker at my job and we were talking in the back room of a location that we don't normally work at and my dream came true. By this time, I had began to keep a dream journal. I was about to say, you might want to start writing stuff down, put a date on it. Because I need evidence of my dreams now and I'm not making it up on the spot. So I carry the journal with me at all times because I want to keep a record of the moment it comes true. After the moment is over, I grab my journal and I show her. Sure enough, about three months earlier, I had dreamt that a girl matching her description and I were talking in the back room and what the conversation was about. That is crazy. Not you're crazy, but I'm saying like, that's crazy. And I was going to say that maybe your parents know something. Like maybe they know something about your family tree. Like maybe you do have mysticism in your family and they're like worried. But this is wild. Like you definitely are a psychic. You have psychic abilities. And it makes sense if you've been seeing ghosts your whole life. It may not even be your house is haunted. It may just be you because you did say you moved. And you over here talking about it since you were one years old and she, okay, I know you were probably just referencing off of your mom when you said since you were one years old, but you have specific memories from being three, like, bruh, you have first person memories of you being a three year old. Now you're an adult and you're prof- you're having pr- prophetic dreams, bruh, I would definitely try to get into um, whatever your faith is 
I would definitely like dive in to your community for real. Um, because I know some people are scared. Some people may think it's demonic or whatever, but other people may think that you're prophetic. Um, not in a, in a, the prophet Jim Jones type of way, girl. But you know, in other cultures, some people with these gifts, they're well-respected members of the community. I said this in another stream. Um, I genuinely believe that all humans have the capability to do this, but some are just more tapped in than others because it is a form of manifestation. But nah, real shit. If you ever have a dream and in the dream, there's a billboard with the winning lotto numbers on it, like slide that shit my way, please. The dreams are persistent. They are so significant. And I tried Googling it, but people talk about dreams of just bad things, never like little things like combos and stuff. However, the paranormal entities have not returned and I do not have nightmares anymore. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. So tribe, what do you think is going on with me? Do you think the spirits are gone? Should I try to ignore the dreams? Have you guys experienced anything similar? Thank you, Nadra, for reading my story. Sorry it's so long. I just wanted to provide all the background so I can get the most relevant advice. Here are some pictures of me and my mom. Also, my mom has had some paranormal experiences, see? So let me know if you guys want her to send those in. Yes, Mama Tribe member. I could also send in how things are from her perspective. Um, Because if I was in her shoes, I'd be pooping my pants give the whole kid away <laughs> basically her mom's stories of raising a supernatural ass kid then she says around four months ago i started wearing an evil eye bracelet do you think that could be why the malevolent parts of my experience have not returned with the dreams well i don't know because from what i heard about the evil eyes is they're supposed to protect you and then when something comes on you or is a threat, it breaks. So I'm not really sure about the relevance with that. Maybe if that's one of you guys' culture, you can explain. But because a lot of people forget the evil eye is, is uh, I think it's Tibetan culture. Like that's not just some spiritual girly accessory type shit. Uh, but let's answer your questions. What do you guys think is going on with me? Do you think the spirits are gone? I honestly feel like you never had any specific spirits attached onto you. I feel like you have always been a psychic. I think you are psychic and you've always been psychic your whole life. And that's why different entities have tried to make contact with you. I also think that's why in different stages of life, it was different paranormal experiences. Because someone made a good point. I don't think one ghost would spend the blip of their existence tormenting your whole existence they would get bored very quickly you know um hey so yeah I don't think the spirits are gone or wherever they're per se I just think that you are a magnet to them um should I try to ignore the dreams you should never ignore your dreams uh your dreams not even on paranormal stuff like on biological anatomical your dreams are your subconscious and then it's up to us in our awakened mind with our logic to decipher the dreams. You should never ignore your dreams. I don't care if your dream is um, your boyfriend cheating on you with a bitch that looked like your coworker. I'm going to need you to actually like don't be crazy and be like, I saw you in that dream cheating. But something's going on. Something's going on. You know, like do not ignore your dreams, bro. And have any of you guys experienced something similar? Yes, it's similar to like how you said deja vu, but you're psychic, bro. Everybody, we get deja vu, right? But you that that's different. You got something different going on, okay? That's different, girl. But yeah, um my advice to you is to keep journaling. Um to a part of me is almost like, girl, you might want to monetize your gifts. <laughs> But I see why you wouldn't want to because they're so flippant. They're so wishy-washy. Maybe you can, like, start uh, training yourself spiritually. I don't know. I don't know. It's all up to you and, like, what you believe in and stuff. But I think that's really cool. Let me know uh, what you guys think. Let me know what y'all think. But um, I'm about to read this next one. 
Ooh. My little onesie, child. Give me some of the drink. So this one is called, this is another one about dreams. I have quite the unusual dream. Trigger warning. Girl, not you put all the trigger warnings in the freaking world. I'm really going to have to put my censorship hat on now. She's going to be talking about death, premonitions, SA. What is PA? What is PA? I'm scared, child. Right, red flags on the play. I don't even know what's going on yet, but I'm scared. Um, Technically, this all happened around Halloween, so I hope it counts. Girl, I hope it counts, too. Hold on. Let me skim this. Let me skim this. Hold on. I'm going to read it, but you tried it because then she's going to send me another email talking about, well, I guess we could call it the worst premonition or dream ever. Okay, friend, let's get into it. So I don't know if this technically follows the rules, but like your last live dealing with a lot of people who have had wild dreams, I'm a part of that crew. But this dream has haunted me. Now, before, you, before I tell you anything, I was 11 or 12 when I had these dreams, but the way things have unfolded, I can't discredit my child self. So there are plenty of experiences in me to count, but I'd say this is the first one that legitimately changed me. As before, I was around 11 or 12, I had a difficult relationship with my father because he was absent, had alcohol problems, but it never changed my love for him. But it's a slight blur. I specifically remember having a talk with my dad in his kitchen about how things are going to be when I grow up and how is he going to change. So this is the dream, I'm assuming. I remember his mouth moving but never hearing the words. As we talk, he walks with me into the bathroom and he lays in the bathtub and his words finally became audible. And he said, I'm sorry that this had to happen the way that it did, but it's for the best and I will always love you. It never came to me in my child mind that this could potentially be real. As time evolves in the dream and my mother introduces her new partner and I specifically remember thinking how fast it was that he came around. The man had an abnormal vibe in the dream and I explained to my mother in this dream about not liking him, not feeling comfortable, and shortly after this, with my face wet with tears, and I was so scared of this dream, and I never brought it up to anyone. Oh my gosh. Years later, I was introduced to the same man my mother had been, had I seen my mother with in my dreams. And he later became my stepfather. Look, this, right, shout out to anybody that just got in the chat. This story does sound very miserable, dog. Like, what? So what is he about to do? Like, I'm scared because you're talking about there's an SA and stuff. Like, see, now you got me on edge. Um... But yeah, I guess the mom, the same look and everything. Later around September, October, my father ended up being admitted into the hospital um, with kidney liver complications. Damn. Damn. She's, she's, y'all need to stop giving all this extra information. Talking about y'all personal self. Y'all need to stop trying to talk to ourselves. Um, my father did end up actually passing. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. After he was admitted, maybe days or weeks. Wow. I never knew he had been in the hospital or was even sick. No one called me or anything. But when I found out how he had been admitted, I quite literally sank to the floor. 
My uncle told me that he had been found by paramedics unconscious in the bathtub for hours. Oh, my gosh. And it clicked that the time was coming. And after all those years, when I visited him the upcoming weeks in the hospital, when we spoke to each other, catching up about school and life, the words he said in my dream finally became clear. It's good to see you. I'm sorry I didn't call you about what was going on. I was scared about how you would react. I know we have had a hard time talking with each other, and I'm sorry it had to happen this way. I found out from my mother literally in the middle of a storm that happened after he passed, that he had passed away. As time went on, I realized why I felt so uncomfortable in the dream around my then stepfather dur during all the crying, grief, and the anger. He had been slithering his way into being verbally inappropriate with me, later to which my mother found out about, yes, yes, she did physically assault me the same way she did in the dream. Wow. So understandably, we were grieving, and for that to also come along, I can't imagine how she felt. He was kicked out, and they later divorced. Wow, she married him? The story goes on, and since this day, my real life, of course, there are things that I have to leave out, but thank you for listening to my dream slash premonition. Apologies, this is a bit sporadic. No, for real, you over here talking about there's SA. You got me scared. <laughs> Jeez. Shot. She's talking about child. I also got a premonition how I predicted my grandmother's cancer. Wow. But that's some whole nother stuff. But that is uh, that stuff still scares me to this day that I predicted that she had cancer. But big thank you for listening, you guys. I love you all. Look, that is wild. So I'm I take it you had another dream because toward the second you were like the words in your oh I get it. So when you had the dream when you were a kid and your dad was talking to you there were no words coming out of his mouth, but his mouth was moving. And then once you found out he had passed the words that came back to you of what he said in the dream. Wow. L mom though. Like, why are you beating your daughter's ass over a man? Glad she divorced him, but mm. L mom move. Not cool. Not cool at all, boo-boo. Not cool at all. What do y'all think? You said at least she got to have some closure, right, in her own way. That was dope. Um, but, yeah, just tons of condolences because that's just a sad situation all around. It's like you lose your dad and then you got this schmuck-ass dude. Ugh. That part, like, damn, can y'all just listen to y'all kids? They be going through it. Man, look. Man, look here. Well, I'm glad that you no longer have to deal with that man anymore. And that was definitely a premonition. That's wild, how it all played out like that. It's almost like uh, God was preparing you for it. Someone in the chat said, I hate the pick me mamas. No, for real. Like, come on now. Like, the hell. But I'm about to get into this next story. Shout out to all of you watching. Shout out to any YouTube people in the future. <laughs> this next one is called It Is Spooky Time, babe. Happy October and happy birthday month to all the fellow Libras and happy Halloween. Shout out to all the Libras. Happy Halloween, guys. So this is a compilation of little bits here and there from my life of spooky encounters. Let me tell y'all something. When you open yourself up to the other side and spiritual stuff, you start seeing things that you thought never existed if you were a skeptic. So when you get into spirituality and open yourself up, you need an open mind, common sense, learn from your mistakes. So off to my stories. 
Um, and I also agree, and that goes for whatever uh, faith you're going into because regardless, when you start getting messages from God or whoever you believe in, you know, you're going to think, like, how was this possible, you know, like, so I agree. I agree. So I'll start when I was little. I had a bunch of Barbies that I stuffed into the drawer. And one night I saw the Barbies that I put into the drawer moving along the floor of the room. Okay. I was a little scared but curious. No, I did not burn the dolls. <laughs> I would have threw them out. I would have been like, that. y'all could have them. I did not burn the dolls. I didn't get rid of them. I just saw them walking and talking with each other. What in the Toy Story? What were they saying? I couldn't hear them. The nightlight was on, which I did end up just taking it out one day on my own. But this is during when I still had it. And the next day, I took out all my dolls and sat them on top of the drawers. And they never did it again. They just chilled where they were. I played with them as usual, and then when they were put up, they were just all hunky-dory. I don't know how I knew to take them out the drawer, but that's what happened. I don't have those dolls anymore, but yeah. Y'all funny talking about they was making a YouTube stop motion video. No, right? Like, what the hell are y'all doing? So you think the dolls just didn't like being in the in the drawer is funny. So the next one I remember most is when I was older and I just started getting into spirituality more. I say more because I've always believed in otherworldly things. And I remember even as a child when I would watch videos with people telling their experiences of otherworldly beings, like their dead relatives. And I was always be like, why are y'all surprised? I used to watch that show um, Celebrity Ghost Stories when I was younger. Have y'all seen that show? You know what I'm talking about? Celebrity ghost stories. Um, I would watch, uh, there was one person, one celebrity. I cannot put my finger on it, but it was a male. And I'm going to try and look him up. He was a black man and he grew up in the South. And he said that his grandmother had passed, but she like came to him physically and like showed, showed him her Bible. And like, it was powerful. But I just, it was just crazy seeing all these different people's stories of like ghost encounters. I used to watch that shit too. And I'm not gonna lie, it used to scare me. It used to scare the hell out of me. But I used to watch it because it was just, I don't know. I had nobody confirming in my real life that that was real. So, yeah, and they do be saying that shit that some of them shows are fake. But I don't know, whenever I saw, like, the testimony shows of, like, people who have completely other shit going on in life and they just came on this little show to tell their uh, ghost story, I believe it. But those paranormal shows, like Paranormal Encounters, and where they go into some random's house with the uh, the uh, tech and the little sound machine, all that shit, I just like, okay, okay. I seen one clip that's circulating right now where it's a guy who's a ghost hunter and he's just taking shots of alcohol, just taking shots. He's like, guys, I, I don't know why I just want to drink so much, guys. It's, it must be the spirit. And I'm like, somebody get Mr. John some water. What are you talking about, sir? He trying to make it seem like on some voodoo, Haitian voodoo shit, like, or African spirituality, let's say that, because it goes across a lot of different beliefs. He trying to say, right, big fake news. He trying to say that the spirit that is possessing him requires spirits. Yeah, wrong spirits, sir. Wrong spirits. The spirits. So... I have protection bracelets on when I watch these shows and I took them off thinking nothing can touch me. And all the while, what happened? Intuition, spirit, anybody else that existed and exists were protecting me. Were screaming at me, put your freaking bracelets back on. Ooh. So you had protection bracelets on and you felt 
something yelling at you to put them back on. Oh, hell no. As soon as I turned the light off, I felt something behind me, and I finally listened and ran back upstairs while I could feel something chasing me. Something told me, do not look behind you, just go. So I ran. I went to my room. I couldn't scream. I had to whisper. And I did go ahead and get the protection and put it on my bracelets. Once I put the bracelet on, it broke. Like I told y'all with the evil eyes in. Girl. And when it broke, it shielded me from whatever was trying to get me, attach me or whatever. This is why you need to use common sense, listen to your intuition and protect yourself. Also, on the same day, my door to my bedroom was already just propped open, even though I thought I locked it. See, now that's that shit that ghosts will do. They'll open and close doors and windows and everything. But I agree with y'all in the chat. I would have just turned the light on like, oh, my gosh. I acknowledge the spirit saying, okay, I can see you. I feel you. Yet I didn't, you know, feel any dread or anything. So I still to this day don't know what that was about. So another time I had gone downstairs, protection bracelets on and everything, because now I always wear them. So once I go down and I open the door, I felt something unsettling, like the aura was just unsettling. It made no sense because I was alone, but I felt its presence. I was halfway down the stairs and the thing is right next to the stairs. What? I went back upstairs because I could, I'm about to say, girl, just leave. Like, Then something in me told me to sing. I started to sing and whatever presence it was went away. Nowhere to be found. So question, question, friend, do you think that it's the house that's causing all of this that you're living in? Do you think it's the bracelets themselves attracting stuff? Like, I'm just confused. Then you you sing in hymns. That's what I'm saying. Like, what's going on here? Is this all in the same house? Y'all talking about I got to pray every morning because of stories like this. Look. Another time I was in my room sleeping and I was going in and out of dreamland. And one time I was in, I think you call it REM sleep. But something was screaming at me to get up. Because when I'm not in that state, it's hard for me to just pop back out. So you would have to like physically shake me to get out of it. But I opened my eyes and I saw a large figure that looked like a man or a shadow of a man in my room. Very big and wide, and he looked like he was muscular, but I wasn't scared. I saw it and was like, are you for real? I literally just told him to get out and leave, and he went away. Fun fact, if you just yell at the ghost and be like, get out, again, you're alive, you have more power, just leave, this is my house, get out of here. You don't got to be nice. My TV was on and I thought I turned it off, but it was on. So I turned it off and I went back to sleep. That shit had me low key annoyed. Like you literally just woke me up for no reason. You perverted ass spirit. Wow. Uh, (laughs) Got me waking up at two, three in the morning again. Witching hour. So this happened, um, there was another time when I was home alone and I felt a sense of dread, like I needed a physical weapon. Girl, the ghost ain't physical. Why do you need a physical weapon? I grabbed a knife. Friend. I grabbed a knife and I went to the front door and I looked through the glass and you could see outside. And I went to the door with the large ass knife. And I felt like somebody was out the door. 
or around the house. And I never felt that way when I was home by myself. So this was kind of new. And honestly, it probably was an actual person. Because why would I feel somebody's outside go get a weapon now? Girl, you think that somebody trying to get you outside? I don't know, friend. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't I don't think anything was coming to get you. I think that you might be a little paranoid now. So this last little experience I had deals with a doll that was given to me by my niece originally. But once she ripped the arms off, my sister put it in my room and I had it for a bit. When the man that gave it to her originally passed, I think that was when the doll became more unsettling. And you know, when my brothers and you know. And would you know that my brother's old dog used to hate that man? He was the only one I remember that he would bark profusely at. Well, damn, rest in peace. That man gone now. Don't get him too much. Uh, <laughs> I have had to clean the doll that was left behind a few times. However, I'm going to be real and say that the doll probably needed a major cleansing. Finally, after such a long time of having it, I finally threw the doll out. I have never felt that unsettling and unsavory feeling since then. It was only that doll, too. I have multiple dolls that I have bought and it always came from that. I have multiple dolls that I have bought, but the energy always came from that one doll. Y'all got to stop using text to speech. I think that's why I keep tripping up. Reread y'all entries, please. Um, It was only that doll. I have multiple dolls that I bought, but it's only that one. When I threw it out and cleansed the space, I put up protections. Um, The trash is under my house in the garage. Girl, I would have put that trash on the street. I would have put that trash on the street. Like, no. And then, if we being real, you low-key just, like, gonna throw away that man's last gift. What made the doll creepy? Just because it had no arms? Aw, that doll needed some love. So the doll never came back, and I'm glad. I don't know why I even kept bothering with keeping the thing. For all I know, his spirit kept coming back or something. Or maybe... It has some some residue from him or something because there's no reason why a doll should always be cocked sideways every time you walk into the freaking room. No, that's true. Well, that's all I got. I hope y'all enjoyed. If y'all want to hear about how I met people and went places I have seen in dreams years before, I can if y'all want to. Peace out, people. So, yeah, I guess this is a common occurrence that we all be going through. See, and this is we wouldn't even know this. If we didn't get together and talk about it. Because. I didn't know that a lot of people were having the phenomena of having dreams about people and then you meet them and stuff to the point where it's just like we got multiple people in our small community who are going through that. But. Oh, excuse me. Um that was a lot going on. I definitely, uh, I don't know about the house. I don't know. Maybe you should get some salt, put it around the perimeter of your house. That'll, that'll protect you more than a knife. It, because you can't stab the plasma, girl. You end up stabbing a person. Like, you can't do that. That's how we get felonies. We can't get felonies. No felonies, okay? No felonies in the tribe. We're, we're getting better now. We can't do that anymore. No felonies. Um, I do think, however, that you are inclined for sure. Um, but when you do get terrorized by that stuff a lot, it does make you a bit paranoid. And like I said with the the story with the hotel and stuff, like some things can be explained, some things cannot. Um, and my advice to anybody out there that's watching this, that's you know getting a little freaked out, always go with physics first. You know, like what can happen, what we can prove and shit. So you don't psych yourself out. Um, You said, what if she traps it inside with all that salt? Look, well, she says she knows how to do a proper cleansing. I would cleanse that house. I probably wouldn't even live in that house, but I get it. This economy is crazy. Um, got to do what you got to do. At least make your room a safe space. You know, cleanse the room that you're in or something. Because 
I don't know, child. Damn, I don't know why these little bangs are so itchy today. I was doing fire shit. For real. Damn, what's up with my thing? But yeah, that is all on that. I'm about to get into the last spooky story of the week. We are going to be doing a Halloween stream next week as well. What day does Halloween fall on? Because I, I keep thinking Tuesday. Yeah, Halloween is on Tuesday. So I'm going to do a Halloween stream on Twitch on Tuesday if you guys want to come and chill with us. But I'm going to be posting it on YouTube on Wednesday. So you do have one more Halloween stream, but this is the last one for the week. And this story is called, Why Is This Happening to Me? <laughs> Damn. Hey, Naja. Obviously, I love you and your videos so much. And you're so beautiful. Like, you're so in everything. Thank you so much. You are too, girl. Um, You are a Capricorn. Shout out to all the Capricorns. Yes. So, hey, tribe. This is my second time writing. At this time, I don't think you read the first story yet, but I want to just share some weird, creepy stories from when I moved to uh, Massachusetts when I was nine. So, let me get right on into it. Massachusetts is pretty creepy. When I was nine, my mom, her boyfriend, and I had moved to Massachusetts. Now, at this time, I was not excited about this move and went from my mom introducing me to him to us moving in with him, not even two months later. Damn, mama. And when I was young, I guess my mom was like a Y2K shoddy, so she always had a man, but I never thought him and her were going to last long. But they're actually married now. Okay. So, but at the time, I didn't think anybody she was talking to would be super serious so it came as a shock to me that we would be moving into an apartment with him. Let me say that this apartment was creepy as fuck. It was located right next to a railroad and was super old and had always looked like a hotel that just went on forever. Oh, the hallways looked like a hotel. Yikes. Most people know, but if you don't, Massachusetts is one of the most haunted states in the U.S., I guess due to the witch trials and things of that nature. I swear the whole year living there, I never noticed other tenants. Oh, hell no. You in that big ass, what in The Shining? Oh, no. I never saw other tenants. Maybe because it was so long ago, I don't remember. But I swear, it seemed like it was just us. Me, my mom's boyfriend, my younger brother, all living on the first floor. Not long after moving into this town and this apartment, weird shit started to happen. Even to this day. So wait, do you still live there, girl? First, my elementary school was old. <laughs> It looked like pilgrims built that shit. What? And there was a forbidden stairwell that all the kids in my class would say was haunted because a girl died up there. Whoa. Whoa. A girl died in the school. Not it, so pilgrims built the school. Oh, my God. Girl. She said the little girl died up there. But it was probably bullshit because there was a caution sign in front of it. So I don't really know. But while I was at this school, another thing about it is that they take us to a grave site for a field trip and showed us some of the witch trial areas. They didn't only take place in Salem, by the way. It's giving drag me to hell vibes. You got the babies dying in school and shit. Like, now we got to go to the graveyard for the school trip. Like, that's the same as, like, 
do they not realize what that was? Like, that was like a mass. Ex- uh, let me chill. Would that be considered like femicide? Did they also kill men that they thought were witches? Like, there are tons and tons and tons of people were murdered for no reason. And that's what we do on a field trip. Hey, sounds American, right? They be taking us to plantations and shit. I met um, <laughs> uh, one of Daniel's friends. Uh, he's from Baltimore. And he told me, or told both of us, that when he was in school, they made them go to a plantation and actually pick cotton, bro. And he remembers looking around like, this is wrong. Like, America's a fucked up place. America is a fucked up place, bro. Definitely scaring the kids. <laughs> Like, bruh, you over here bringing them to the graveyard? These are real people. These were real people that died. Yeah, bruh, they had them picking cotton and shit, bro. It is giving Pierre, <laughs> Pierre, beyond scared straight. <laughs> Man, look. The first elementary school built by pilgrims. A girl died up in the bathroom or something. And another thing they did was take us to the witch trial grave sites. One of the first things I remember about the apartment we moved into, maybe a month or so into moving in, one night my mom had tucked me into bed and I laid down to sleep. At least that's what I thought. I quickly popped up after she got in bed and so I started to play um, Nintendo DSi. Girl, I used to have one of them. I used to play the Nintendo for a while until I eventually fell asleep and I woke up abruptly to a voice whispering in my ear. I don't remember what it said, but I just know once I opened my eyes, I could no longer move and I was stuck. Blinking fast as I watched my closet door slowly open and I heard the loud sounds of the train going past my bedroom window. In my head, I tried to rationalize, but fear took over as I watched my Barbie dolls walking. What is happening? Why are the Barbies? Bro, Barbie's demonic, bro. Barbie's demonic. It's been settled. Them them bitches are demonic. What? 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 The Barbies is walking again. In my head, I'm screaming for my mom, but nothing's coming out of my mouth. I felt like time stopped and I was helpless and I wanted to cry until everything just stopped all at once and I could regain my movement and I just hopped out of my bed and ran straight into my mom's room. Before my mom's boyfriend, I was used to sleeping in there, but she told me to just go back to my room. Man, fuck him. Really? No, for real. That's why I never played with dolls. For No, I'm lying. I was with them brats. I was playing with brats. I'm not going to lie to you. But brats don't even got feet. So I didn't have to worry about my brats running around at night. They had no feet. This is not right. Why are the Barbies running? Oh, my God. So I walk back to my room. I jump on my bed, scared something would try to grab my feet, pull the blanket over my head. I know that's right. And force myself to sleep. In the morning, I got up to start my routine, and I turned my head to see my closet door had been slightly ajar. The thing is, this was an old door that was hard to open, and my mom always closed my closet for me. The toys were not where I had left them, and it, and I wasn't the type of kid to tell my mom everything, so I just kept it to myself. Mom tripping mom tripping I would have been like boyfriend part of being with me is sometimes my daughter be getting scared and need to run into the bed so you need to go sleep on the couch for tonight see so the second creepy thing I remember from this apartment was this day my mom and her boyfriend told me they were going to the gym and they would be leaving me home my mom did the whole don't open the door for anybody and they'll be back in an hour I was unbothered by this because I was comfy in bed watching True Jackson VP. I know that's right. And I had been left home alone before, so I was like, whatever. About 30 minutes go by, 
and I'm sitting in bed enjoying my show till out of nowhere I hear the cabinets in the kitchen being slammed over and over again. I froze listening wondering if my mom had come back but I never heard the door open or any footsteps so I just start crying <laughs> I would have been crying, too, because honestly, can y'all please leave me alone? I am just a kid by myself, bro. Like, leave me alone. I really would have lost it if the train started going. Oh, my God. I would have been pissing and crying and drooling. Oh, my gosh. I start crying, and I thought maybe I should close the door like the white folks do and investigate. After the slamming stop, I mustered up the courage to walk quietly hiding behind the wall leading to the kitchen. I poked my head around the corner and nothing was there but a dark shadow, not like a person, but just something really dark. My body felt sick and I rushed back to my room and I closed the door without turning my back to it while waiting and watching the door while crying. My mom came home and I still never said anything. Wow. Kudos to you for not keeping your eye off that shit, though. Because, bruh, I wish I would have, man, look, there have been so many times I wish I would have never took my eye off that shit. Oh, my gosh. So a more recent story that happened a week ago. Girl, you still there? You still live there, girl? Damn, these fucking headphones are killing me. Hold on. I feel like that would help. Hey, shout out to Cynthia for the subscription. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys subscribe using Amazon Prime. It's free ski if you got Prime. You can subscribe to me on Twitch, right? Right, right? I thought it was cheaper, but y'all say it's free. You get one free one a month. So use your one this month for me. So yeah, here's some more creepy stuff. I've been having the most real feeling sleep paralysis experience. Don't give me no sleep paralysis tonight, Lord. Oh my gosh. The first one that has me shook to my core started like any regular night. I have off from work, probably watching some YouTube until I get tired and roll over to sleep. I woke up and it's slightly dark in my room besides the light from my little Christmas tree I keep up year round. And my Roku screen. I be calling it Roku City, girl. She got the Roku City going. I've been used to sleep paralysis at this point, but this one was different. Someone or something had pulled me up by my shirt and pushed me back down. So they went like this. Then, oh, hell no. Then they strangled me with my sheets. What? I can't. Shout out to Machiavelli for the subscription. Yo, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I really, really do. Make sure y'all uh, use the, um, what's it called? The, the emotes that I got y'all. But yeah, that is wild. You said the ghost tried to choke you out. Not y'all said the ghost is jumping her. That's funny. No, she said she really thought she was going to die. She's like, I actually thought this is how I'm going to die. It. She said, how did it do it? So at first they said they went like this and then slammed them down, then got the sheets and tried to wrap it around their neck. She said whatever did this did it to me a couple times. I would fall back asleep and then it would happen again and again. It felt like it wouldn't stop until I thought, God, please make it stop. And then it stopped. I broke out of this and my throat felt tight. I'm not religious by any means, but I thought that maybe calling out to God would help it. And it did. Look. I like I keep saying during the stream because this is about spooky stuff and people like to get spiritual and spirituality and religion. I get it. 
don't care what you believe in, bro. You got to believe that there is a God or at least believe in an entity bigger than yourself, like the universe or something. Because universally, when you call on something that you have faith that is bigger than yourself, it'll work. You better rebuke the fuck out of that bit. Right. You better rebuke. Now, this is the last story that happened three days after my last sleep paralysis experience. And this one started the same way. Damn, choking you out again. I'm watching TV. I turn over to sleep. But the thing that was different was that while I woke up and couldn't move, I felt like I was being forced in and out of sleep and could see dark hands going over my eyelids. All this is happening. I'm watching my door open. And I just remember being pissed like, bitch, whatever the fuck this is, is pushing me to my limit. Like, and like we were talking about earlier, when people be messing with your sleep, trying to make you go crazy. Like this thing is fucking with you, bro. When I got loose from them tying the shit around my neck again. I grabbed a squishmallow and threw it as hard as I could toward my door while laying down. Then once again, I was being strangled with the blanket. Oh, my gosh. But this time it felt like whatever it was, was trying to force the blanket in my mouth. What is happening? And you hit. What is happening, bro? I'm. It was trying to force the blanket down my mouth and I fell asleep and woke up with my throat feeling tight and dry. What the hell? Shout out to the pizza bungalow for the follow. I appreciate you. I like your name. I am in shock right now. This girl just got gagged by a ghost. So I reached for my phone and was like, this bitch is really trying to get me, huh? Is it even 3 a.m.? And it was only 2.55. I was not even scared. I'm just angry at this point. Like, who is terrorizing me? Whoever did this think, like, did whoever did this think it was like, shit, I can't sleep peacefully? Like, so I told my sister in the morning when she got up, that I was literally fighting demons last night, like literally fighting demons. We're over here trying to laugh it off. And she tells me that she woke up around the time that I broke out of my paralysis because she heard our dog barking. Mm, if y'all don't know, animals, specifically dogs, domesticated dogs, are very, very, very sensitive to the paranormal. They have very heightened senses. She said she heard our dog barking. And she also told me she sometimes gets sleep paralysis. It felt reassuring to know I wasn't the only one, but I also fear that I've been bringing whatever was in my old apartment, like carrying it around with me for years. I'm not into churches and stuff like that, but if you have any advice, I'd love to hear you from you or the tribe. Thank you for reading my story. I love all of you guys. I have some more weird ones, so maybe I'll write more. Have a safe Halloween, everyone. Girl. Uh, I don't even know what to tell you. Get the fuck out of Massachusetts. Get the fuck out of Massachusetts, girl. Get out of there. I don't even know what to tell you. Like, that place is so active. I don't even know what. And the crazy thing is, is it's like, check me if I'm wrong. Check me if I am wrong. Please check me if I am wrong. Please check me if I'm wrong. But if my memory serves me right, Tichuba was the first sign of voodoo on, like, documented type shit. Not saying that that has not been going on beforehand or whatever. I'm just saying like document it because then that's when they stole T 
Tishibus practice and used it in Salem and all of that shit, right? There aren't just the spirits of the women murdered, and it wasn't just white women murdered. So it's like there is a lot of stuff going on over there. And then you have the war. Like, y'all got that is just a very hyper, hyper active place. And I, f- I feel like a lot of people who are into the paranormal move there on purpose, which also heightens it even more. The same with New Orleans. I feel like people move to New Orleans on purpose that are into the paranormal, um, going robbing graves and shit, like just being fucking weirdos, being like the Ted Bundy fan ass bitches, you know. Um, I feel like those type of places, it just gets heightened. It just gets heightened, you know. Um, but... Yeah, move the fuck out of Massachusetts. Because <laughs> unlike our last girl, I don't think you're psychic. I really do feel like you're having a human experience and something's trying to fuck with you. Like, it literally, even your anger towards the end, it's just like, okay. Like, I that's a very common thing I see. People who live in New Orleans, Massachusetts, um, even old, you know, old Northeast, old Connecticut type shit, right? It's like they're used to the knocks on the walls and the creeks at night and shit. I used to live in, when I lived in New York, um, I used to live in an old, 100-year-old house. Um, I still be, I be looking it up every once in a while. Just be like, bro, is that shit real? Because, boy, there used to be all types of stuff. My grandma told me she used to catch me just talking to myself in that bitch. I have memories of, like, the cats in the house being very hyperactive at night and, like, Look, up north, it can get spooky, bro. It can get very spooky with them old-ass homes, them old, like you said, them pilgrim-ass, yeah, bro. And it be certain spirits you don't even think about because you think, like, oh, it's not the South. There was no slave. They had slaves, girl. They had slaves up there, bro. It's, it's, it can get crazy. Y'all, you said the house you live in now is over 100 years old. Oh, my goodness. It's kind of impressive that they even still have houses that old in this climate. I feel like they just keep building them damn shoeboxes. If you know, you know. Them damn shoebox apartments. But yeah, if I was you, I know you said you're not in the church, but you need to get some type of faith system going on. It doesn't have to be organized. You need some type of faith system going on because you got way too much activity and you refuse to leave. At this point, it's like the battle of the who's going to leave. Like don't do it right and you live in a railroad town you need to go friend you need to go but I really do feel like yup that too if it's a pentaplex a duplex but it's five units it is older than it seems that's where I live too that's what I lived I call it a house but yeah it was like five units in there and we had I call it like a core line house we had the um we lived in the one that was the main so we had um, upstairs and downstairs and we had a basement and we had a garage, but there were still other families in that bitch, like very old, 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 way older than you think. Like that used to be one big house at one point. It's crazy. But yes, protection would be very, very helpful for you. Um, and get some type of faith thing going on. You need something. You need something. Whether it's just journaling or something, because these ghosts be bored, child. <laughs> but um, that is all that I have for today's stream, because I'm keeping these other stories for next week. Um, Let me make sure. Yeah, that, that's all of them. Um, Shout out to Khalifa for the follow. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for the follow on Twitch. Um, Thanks to all the people who have moved over to Twitch to chill with me in the live chat. I really, really appreciate y'all. And shout out to the YouTube uh, live chat for still being in there and still keeping it popping. Um, I appreciate you. Hey, thank you for the cheers. Thank you so much. We've been working hard. We've been working hard. I hope you guys are enjoying these long behind streams because I do. I really do. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys stay tuned for the Halloween stream next week. But um, yeah, make sure you send me in your Thanksgiving stuff. So if you guys want to be 
um, one of the first few people to do the voice note stuff. I haven't had anyone's voice on Try T since I did the podcast. And um, yeah, so if you guys want to, I think the rule is going to be maybe 60 seconds to 90 seconds. I just want something that you guys can send me real quick. You have full creative control over type shit. Um, and yeah, I'll say more details in the next stream, I guess, um, when it's not the spooky stream. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 